Eons ago, during the Age of the Magi, the world was something other. Magic is all that there was and all that was needed. Legend states that a cataclysmic event brought a great frozen age to the world of Lacrin, and soon after, a new era dawned. Though they say the ancient magics of the Magi still lie buried and lost, scattered around the world, lie in wait for those with the courage to wield it to discover. Welcome to the world of Lacrin and the continent of Thelmesia. Noble knights, roaming orcs, mischievous goblins, and idyllic wondrous lands, just waiting to be explored. Now, a new peril aspires to plunge Thelmesia into despair once more, but not before a few unheard of heroes take their chance at triumph. Welcome to Table Story, Darkfire. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Table Stories Dark Fire with your host, yes. Tiger Writer. Mouth, Finally. Mouthful of chicken. Is that chicken? <laughs> chicken. I don't know what he just said. Fake chicken, Brad. Oh, fake chicken. chicken. Or fate chicken, oh, however okay. you want to take it. The fake chicken fake. of the fates. Fake. Um, there is a... It's fake. Uh, it's fake chicken now. This is Dean. Not real. <laughs> He's a vegetarian. I don't care what he is. It's fate chicken. It doesn't matter. Fate. That's true. We're the, all sluts the here. Chicken, the chicken of fate. You know, you eat the chicken and you get one vision of D6. the future. One D6 oh visions God. of the future. <laughs> <laughs> you just use it life. You get it. <laughs> one D6 nope. visions of the future. Um, <laughs> that'd be horrific. I, I hate that stuff as well. Because we were just kind of talking about like, messing around with timelines in D&D and how difficult it is to do like and then there's all these things that are like yeah you get one thing that's gonna happen in the future and it's like oh man I don't know what's gonna happen it's D&D who knows what the dice is gonna roll uh yeah you guys are all gonna die um <laughs> I don't wanna die dude the future is wibbly wait, can wobbly. I die wait can I ask you this out of character just before we start yeah. just as like just a friend talking to a friend sure. can I die in this tournament <laughs> Uh, no. I, I didn't think about that because I know they said there's no killing, but there has been some deaths. Didn't they say that's that? Why, that's right. why I tried to ask for the rules last session. Yeah, there is rules. There is rules, but you were asking like these dwarves that don't really give a fuck. Yeah. Um, so they don't know them exactly. You'll find them out when okay. you go to your little meetings. And okay. Stuff, okay. But they they we'll don't they don't they they try not to let anyone die. It's it's pretty difficult. They to try die. not to, dude. I'm gonna be fighting that Goliath, dude, and just it's gonna. Well, ex excessive Ugh. force and damage that would instantly kill an opponent will be treated as murder is one of the rules. Okay, cool. So uh, if you if you just like do unbelievable amounts of damage and kill someone, or like or like it's obvious that you're just like you've won and you're just still hacking away at their neck, then you'll right. be you know. There's a lot of people watching right. this. Yeah. So we'll see. Who knows? We'll, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. We'll see if you're gonna you're gonna bite someone and drink the blood. I'm gonna bite their ears. Hell yeah! I'm gonna go uh, full Tyson. <laughs> Is your Holy name God. Evander? <laughs> I'm gonna make sure uh, Sir Sieg's first name is now Evander. <laughs> 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 was it Holyfield? Uh, he bit. It was right. Um, yeah. 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 He bit Holyfield. Yeah. yeah. Tyson was. Uh, so. Welcome to the stream, everybody. Thank you for joining us here this evening. Um, this is our game, not yours. Be quiet. Sit down. <laughs> you can you can look, but you can't speak. No more speaking in chat. Thank you. No leaving comments on the YouTube. <laughs> Thank you. They'll do it. They always don't do what I no say. No more talking. They always it's... don't do what I say. No matter how many times I ask them, please don't sub to my channel, I say. Please don't. I need you to sub to my channel. I need a new phone, actually. My phone. It's called reverse this psychology. Is my, this is this is two phones old. This phone. This is my phone oh. from two phones ago. What happened? I mean, is that like iPhone six? It's a it's a Samsung S six, maybe a five. I don't know. Five. This is my phone. It's that new Razer one. It's really good. I threw it in the toilet. <laughs> uh, the other day. Why? 
I woke I woke up, I walked to the toilet, I put it on the side, it fell in. That was it. And it ruined it? Destroyed like it instantly, yeah. There's because the speakers on it Damn. just are holes. Apparently, you yes. love huh? I hear you're pretty quiet. Yeah, I can't hear anything you're saying. Nope, it's because I don't want to chew. In your ears. Uh, Ooh, in your ears. Yeah, ASMR stream. What is this? This is 2018 internet, dude. You can monetize the <laughs> hell out of that. Isn't it? Isn't it 2018? Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it, mate? Isn't it? Oh, hey, yeah. you taking a piss oh, out of the way go. I speak, though. I'm taking a piss on the way you oh, talk, yeah. man. Yeah, I oh, am. Yeah. What are you going to do about it? Shut your mouth, though. You shut your I'll mouth, I'll fucking knock you out, That's lad. It. I'm going to chew in your ear. <laughs> <laughs> Dick Van Dyke over there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alright, what was I saying? Anyway, yeah, I was saying don't subscribe to my channel. Um, yeah. But you can subscribe so to this one. Do subscribe because you need a new phone. So everybody, yeah. Yeah. subscribe. Yeah. Subscribe to this one first, though. Subscribe yes. to this one first. This is way more important. Yeah, I don't see Penny one, but subscribe to this one and then go I mean, and subscribe. I'll be the one to say it. Draw all of a sudden to me. I don't You care. can all subscribe. <laughs> Tiger needs a new phone. <laughs> Hashtag Tiger needs a new phone. Um, all right, welcome to the stream. Today we're going to be playing some uh, some Table Story Dark Fire. It's five E D and D homebrew by me. This is a John Sandman roll call right there. It's about to about to go on, John. Yeah, you better throw down. No, you like my new uh, my new Lightning McQueen in the background. I wasn't going to mention it. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, uh, I didn't even notice that. I wasn't gonna. Am I alien? It's so perfect. Powered with the merch, <laughs> representing. Oh no! It's gonna, it's oh, gonna tell no. you. Give it three more months. A whole background will be filled with just cardboard cutouts. I'm not even kidding. Oh no! The whole thing. Um, yeah. It's bad. It's well, addicting. Yeah. Um. I used to steal those. I used to work in a cinema you and they would come in. I used to steal those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go, Brad. I talked about had, it. We had so many of those uh, in like our rooms that all of us that worked at the cinema, we they would come in and obviously they're like, you know, like whatever would be in there. I can't think of what. Legally Blonde 2, it was like that old. And like there'd be like there'd be like a big fucking like eight foot Reese Witherspoon that would come in that morning and would be gone that night because one of us would be like, ha, look at my house. Uh, <laughs> she'd just be standing there in the front yard. Um, Can I give you a cardboard cutout of me, John? Yeah, dude, you send it to me, oh I will put God, it up in the back. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I it costs it cost seventy five dollars online to make a three by six. What really? Where's yep, seventy five. You can make your own. I did on Google. I said, you know how many viewers of yours I could steal? They'd be like, "Who's that fat guy in the background?" <laughs> and then they'd be like, "Ah, oh, who's that?" And they'd go watch me. I know. I'm yeah, I'm telling you, man. I will literally anything people send me in the back. Yeah, it's done. Anything. As long, anything? As, not, as, long as it's not racist. Anything? Oh, uh, as long as it's not racist. I didn't sexual say anything. Things oh, incoming. So. Sexual. Listen, we'll figure it out. My arms are gonna be big penises. That's all it's gonna be. <laughs> like. <muscle. laughs> Very flexing cocks. Literally, that's what I said, Brad. I'm not kidding. I was like, dude, like old school PewDiePie. You are 2016 PewDiePie. Which means you got you got a real bad out. scandal coming you know up. That, you know that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know that one meme of the kangaroo that's jacked. No. You know, the, the jacked kangaroo. Yeah. yeah it just. Chop tiger's arms off and put them on. <laughs> Man, I would love to see that. You up. Yeah. yeah, they're all ripped. Oh, yeah, they will. They're all ripped. They look crazy. I might put a kangaroo yeah. in a D and D someday and just be one of the hardest things you can fight. <laughs> can I play kangaroo if I die? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. For sure. Homebrew. Homebrew is the best. A homebrew creatures all the way. Um, mm -hmm. Unless you want to do what Tiger always wants to do. Do you remember when we first met Tiger and you were like, I would like to play a gaseous ooze type acidic creature. <laughs> I was like, ah. That's, I was going to play. I was going to play an ooze. Ooh, right there. I don't know, man. I don't know if I can be fucked. I still want to play an ooze. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but I, I'm, I feel like I'm a lot more equipped to deal with it now. At the, at the time, at the beginning of Darkfire, uh, at the beginning of uh, Fractured Worlds, I really Fractured. was quite a scrub. Did You're I? a mess. Me? Yeah. <laughs> At the beginning, I didn't know what I was doing, really. I know, I know. That's what I love about it. And I had already, I'd, I'd only kind of half DM'd like two half of 
other campaigns. Wack, like was... towards the end, Wack was always in there, just like helping you with whatever. <laughs> like yeah. this is before I knew Wack. Yeah, it was well, helping this, me with whatever. I, this is what I said about when I was um, when I was preparing this one. It's one of the first. It's I haven't done it in years where I haven't consulted Wack on anything. <laughs> For like when I was building this campaign, I was like. I can't ask Wax stuff about this because it's just spoilers because it will just ruin and his yeah, game. He's yeah. in it. So Darkfire is fully 100% mine, whereas uh, I guess the, like Dust Veil, Storm King's Thunder maybe, and uh, Fractured Worlds 2, Wax was a consultant many, many weeks on those How shows. is that, Wax? Give us just the background yeah. on that. Well, John, you got a really uh, intimate uh, taste of my interaction with Brad on the uh, on the Fractured World stuff. That's true. Actually. You remember when Clutch died? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. oh, what? Did you just spoil me? Oh, yeah, she's watching that. Alert. Hey, listen, you got to catch up by now. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. Listen, just don't get too attached, okay, PB? Just don't. <laughs> Fuck! I was trying. <laughs> I tried I to it avoid it so much it's, as well. I know. Whatever, there'll be so many situations where Clutch almost dies every time she's watched. Yeah, she won't know when. This is the one. This is oh, it. Oh man, uh, that was you. Guys. Wait, were you the? Now that she's not here, were you the beholder guy? Did you give him that idea? I I told him I was going to use one. He's like, to be fair, it does happen in Fractured Worlds too, and not one. And she might not watch that, so. What do you mean? She's gonna be watching the whole of Fractured Worlds, not Fractured yeah, Worlds it's Guardians. Yeah, gonna take her fucking. And she's, uh, every time hours. that you're like at like one HP, she's gonna be freaking yeah. out. Um, PB, we just decided this is gonna. Now? Yeah, this she's is gonna make the series. Oh, this is gonna make oh, shit, she's the back. series. Oh, oh god. Um, it's gonna make the series better for you. I, I mean, maybe. It's not like I'm. You don't know when it'll right? happen. It's just. Did I ever tell you about the time that my dad used to say, "This is the episode MacGyver's gonna die," and I would spend the entire episode in tears because <laughs> I thought this was the episode that MacGyver was gonna die, and uh, then it's and like. Of all of the shows, MacGyver. Towards, I fucking love MacGyver. I wanted to wife him so bad. So just don't even get me started about MacGyver. But anyway, the moral of the story. The is... Wife MacGyver. Do you like Columbo too? No. Just MacGyver. Yes, MacGyver. <laughs> God. The moral of the story is I'm super gullible, so I will probably cry every episode now, thinking that one of my favorite characters is gonna die. So I'm, thank, thank you, uh, Ak. You are very sweet, but <laughs> you're gonna. It's you'll see. It all ends up okay. It all ends up okay. We'll see. Maybe. Who knows? Uh, maybe we'll all die in this episode. TPK. Yeah, maybe. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna die while my armor's getting forged on me. I can feel it. Yeah, <laughs> damn Before right you are. Let's begin Let's the episode today. Uh, I think this is chapter 16. Um, as a quick recap of what's happened in the uh, last few sessions, you guys came to Roseguard, the capital city, to um, look for some sort of magical runes on behalf of Hasmol, Daddy Hasmol. Um, a big fire elemental thing. Um, while you've been here, you've been up to all sorts. All sorts of many things. Um, and, uh... How uh, long have we been here? I, I, in this town? Uh, Not even a, a night? It's yeah, three hours? Yeah, you've, you've been here for a day. Five hours? Yeah, like... A yeah, day. <laughs> <laughs> like one, one, like you arrived at, like, midday, and it's now evening. Um, God. I think it's been like four sessions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a session an hour. Um, so you've done a few things. You've been shopping. You've bought some stuff. You uh, interacted with some people. Um, you tried to get a, a Goliath, a wife, um, which kind of went horribly wrong, kind of. No, it didn't. All right. Well, I guess, again, this is a matter of opinion um i try and stay as neutral as possible but i assure you it went horribly wrong um, <laughs> um the uh you you also uh you each now essentially what happened last week is that you got to the point where you each have a meeting um rin and 19 are meeting with a group known as the karsharian tomorrow at midday and um, Iridir and um, 
and Drift, I almost said Clutch, God, my heart. Um, and Drift are meeting with um, the Boulder Downs on behalf of the nobility. Mm -hmm. um, That's as, with Eero, correct? Yeah. Each, cool. each of you are to be entered, hopefully, into the... Um, into the uh, contest. Sorry, my, my internet's being weird. I thought it was cutting me out. Um, so, you have a tournament coming up two days from now um, known as the Rose Guard Autumn Festival Melee Tournament. There is two other tournaments that happen there, by the way, if people mention it. Um, there's a magic tournament and an archery tournament. Uh, but you an guys are on... archery contest? It's a, it's a three-day event. Um, but you guys are only really involved in the first day. Um, oh, that's what they thought we I was part of. <laughs> the <melee. laughs> they didn't believe I was fighting. Oh, <laughs> the melee contest. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to go over it too much. Hopefully, because I think there's just too much for me to, like, catch up with everyone. But essentially, you have a meeting um, each with two separate groups. Um, midday tomorrow. And... The day after that is when the tournament begins. Um, Drift is for sure entered. His name is like on stuff that's starting to circulate around town. Um, and Rin has sort of confirmed that 19 would probably be in it on behalf of these Karsharians. Um, I would fast forward to the next day, but I feel like Rin probably needs to approach 19 and let him know. So... <laughs> We're just going to jump back in to the uh, the tavern that you guys were in. The Iron Well Inn, absolutely packed to the rafters is the Iron Well Inn, as usual, because it is the festival week and people have been traveling from all over uh, Thelmesia and the world, actually. I should probably just say the world to come to this, um, this festival. So it's a very, very packed out inn and you guys don't even have seats or chairs um, or a table to sit at. You have a corner buy some stairs um and iridir has just finished his awful story um oh yeah we loved it <laughs> you guys loved it because uh, you know him everyone else hated it because they don't and he rolled a one um so i think uh yeah um your little um halfling friend probably um showered you with praise and um and then I assume probably left, to be honest, Iridir, um, after you finished your... Horrible story. Horrible story. Um, hey, I didn't roll the dice. You did. Um, <laughs> I got so much shit for that this week. I'm bitter about it. Uh, Brad is so defensive. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, why does none of my stuff work today? Please, internet. At least we're streaming. Okay, we are streaming, right? I apologize if my stream is doing some weird things, everybody. Um, for some reason, my internet's been a little spotty. Um, I think it's only affecting Zoom, which is at least something, kind of. Um, so, yeah, Rin, um, you just had a meeting with Tari, or she left, um, the masked figure, on behalf of this group. Um, Iridir, you've probably just finished performing, um, stepped off the stage, and Drift and 19 were at the bar. Um, I assume you guys come together as a four again, unless anyone wants to do something very specific. No, I'm no, I, I, yeah, I'd probably get, I'd probably gather around Eero for a moment. Just, that was awesome. That was a great story, Eero. Well, thank you. I think I might have misjudged the crowd, though. Perhaps a different tale next time. I mean, the guy standing next to me, he's, he seemed to be pretty into it. I, I think he did great. He was probably drunk, according to most of the rest of the people here. Well, it made me feel better, so thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to hit the hay, if that's okay with you guys. What does that mean? When I was a kid, I would always... Uh, There'd be big old buckets of hay, and I'd punch it, and my my mom would tell me to to just go to sleep because I was so riled up. So now I just when I'm when I'm gonna so go to sleep, go. I say I'm gonna it, go hit the bales of hay. Yeah, just because like I'd get riled up, and then I then I need to sleep. So I'm I'm just pretty pretty much it means I'm just gonna go to sleep. It, oh, 
Why oh. didn't you just say that? I, I don't never I... understand. Oh, it's just another way of saying I'm gonna sleep. You just say I'm gonna hit the hay. But you guys don't have to say this. This is my thing. I don't. I'm not gonna try and put that on you guys. Oh, of course. I don't want to hit any hay. You, you really don't have to. That's the beautiful thing. I'm. 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 I'm gonna go to sleep. Okay. I. We have a big day tomorrow. I have a big meeting. Um. You guys are free to sleep in the room too. I. You mean my room? I would assume that I can sleep in my own room. Yeah, of course. But I may. I mean. I made the deal with you. I, I helped make the deal, so I feel like I get a portion of. I, I get to sleep. Oh, do you? Right, Hero? Fine. Of course, you can sleep with me tonight. Thanks. Can I go hit the hay? No, but you can go to sleep in my room. Okay, thank you, Arrow. Hey guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Um, I hope, I, I mean, we're probably all going back there, right? Are you guys finding somewhere else? What? I don't um, want you sleeping on the street. I mean, I don't want, I want to I stay. Don't, I don't really need to sleep. So, Eero, is it okay if I just meditate in the corner of your room for a couple Fine. of hours? Thank you. Uh, 19? Uh, I'll probably just sleep, do what I always do. Would you like me to join you? Do you feel unsafe by yourself? Is that what this No, 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 no. I just wanted to make sure. No, I wanted to make sure we stayed together. You know, we have oh, I thought big day tomorrow. Scared of nightmares or night tears or darkness or something like that. Or chests. No, no. What? Nothing. I think she said <clears throat> nothing. The I'm curse go breaker to... isn't afraid of anything. Anything. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not scared of anything. That's why no, I didn't, nothing I didn't at understand all. what you whispered under your breath right there. You, I said nothing. Okay. You're afraid of nothing. All right. I'll see you guys in the in the room then. Mm. And I'm going to walk off and uh, Good evening. get ready for bed. Do you have the key? Yes, he does actually. I do. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah she threw it back to me. Okay. Yeah. I just want to track I, where it is. I will follow him. Okay. Um... <clears throat> Don't even think about it. <laughs> I don't like you thinking at all right now. <laughs> I'm just trying uh, to sleep. Are there still a lot of people in here? Yeah. Yeah, it's still pretty busy. You're going to go again? It's, 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 still <laughs> quite, it's still quite early. Um, uh, I think it's probably like, because you guys only got here at like eight or something like that. So probably, let's say like nine. It's really not very late at all. Um, you guys did travel a lot, though. This has been a really long day. I'm just day. exhausted, man. Like, yeah, yeah. For, for in terms Shopping. of time-wise, you guys walked since the the um, uh, when you guys encountered the cyclopses. You knew they were, you didn't know they were cyclopses, but we knew. Since then, you've been awake pretty much since that rest. You've walked all the way to town. Um, you've walked around town, and you've done all that stuff today. Um, so, I'd say you're probably all pretty tired. Um, we also woke up early, right? Because we were startled by those So things. early. Yeah. So early. So we didn't uh, even you, finish our sleep, really. You've had a super long day, and I'm not too harsh on exhaustion and things, but I think if you guys were to really push it tonight and do anything crazy, you'd probably hit an exhaustion point. Um, if you were like, I'm going to go outside and fight everyone, <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah, I'm going to... Uh, I'm probably going to follow them. Head to, head to bed. Okay. Uh, um, 19? Yeah, as, uh, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I thought you were just, that you were done. You can carry on. Mm. Uh, yes, no, I was asking Iridi, I, I thought you were done. Oh, um, sorry. Yeah, so, yeah, if I, if everybody's kind of like, uh, going to bed, um, yeah, I'm gonna start just taking off all my clothes. Okay. <clears throat> You'll find clothes. Very and fine. Start taking mate. off all my clothes. Everything. <laughs> all the way off. Boot naked. Butt naked. Okay. Butt all naked. Uh. Eero? Yes. Um. Are you are you are you sleeping like that? Of course. Okay. All right. Uh, I take off just like 
some of my like I, I don't take off like any of my undergarments or anything. Um, what does this room look like, Brad? Is there just a bed, and then it's like floor and? Yeah, it was the super small room. Um, it does have a double bed, um, like double sized bed, um, and it does look comfortable, um, feather, but um, it almost fits the entire width of the room. Um, it has uh, pretty much just got this bed in it. Then there's a small chest at the end of the bed. Um, there's a windowsill with a little rose in a pot and a small window that looks out. Uh, that's it. So it's either A, sleep with naked man, or B, sleep in a chest, which I will never fucking touch. Yeah, no, right? I mean, there's there's a little space uh, at the foot of the bed that you'd probably which fit. Which I am using to... Which she's meditating. meditating. Right, <laughs> so, yeah. She's so in spot in the bed. You could, you could open the chest. I think it's probably not even that big of a chest, though. Are you kidding me? No. Okay, I'm just, you know, you can. I'm just saying it's, yeah, an, it's an option. You can go out and hunt down a dragon and try and fight it if you wanted as well. That's also an option, <laughs> but you probably don't want to do that either. I love, I love D and D, man. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, I'm gonna wait for Eero to get into bed and just see what he does. <laughs> yeah, I climb into bed. I make like a little space for, for drift. I just kind of, uh, a drift. Are you coming? <laughs> Not yet. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll be right there. I just, I was gonna, um, yeah, I just have to remove this last little shoulder thing and take it off. And I just like, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not that weirded out. It's more just like, I've never, like, I never, when I would go to bed, I would never get butt naked, but I've known by now, like seeing him in the river and, and, you know, he's very comfortable with his body and very comfortable. Just you know, doesn't give a shit. Um, so, um, I just, I just, you know, step up onto the bed. I sort of bow my head because I'm laying next to him and want him to know that I will, I'll be here on the side of the bed if he needs anything. <clears throat> and I lay my head down. On the... All right, here it is. Yeah, I, 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 I gently spoon. <laughs> 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 okay, so here it is. Spoons drift for the evening. Um, <laughs> Rin meditates. I look, I look scared, but just I let it out. It's, <laughs> it can't be as scary yeah. as the chest. Uh, yeah, exactly. Rin, exactly. Rin meditates on the uh, the pretty hard wooden floor at the foot of the bed. Nineteen. What are you doing? Are you still in? Are you in the room, or are you heading? I'm in are the you still. staying in the tavern? Um, I'm, I'm just in the tavern, so I wouldn't say I'm really doing anything. I just haven't really. I just didn't really follow them in. And <laughs> if I notice they're gone, though, I most likely would open the door and most likely end up being a very loud war forge entering a very small room. <clears throat> okay. Mm -hmm. And then what? You're just <laughs> standing there. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, terrifying. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna come in and like I see Rin meditating. I see. I just kind of look at the spoon going on and I just turn and I face the door and I just go into, into my mode. Right. Yeah. I feel like, like you're probably almost like I'm locking the door. So if somebody tries to come in, like I yeah. came in absolute fire hazard right there. Um, <laughs> all right. Wake up. So, um, you are able to, to remain in a watchful state though. Give me a perception check. I will do this for you, Brad, because I love you so much. Get it. And Big eight. A, uh, eight. Eight. Very good. Thank you very much. You're very welcome, sweetheart. <laughs> so lovely today. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, those of you that only need four hours, you get your four hours. Um, and those of you that need the full eight, um, of sleep, I'd say you probably I need, sleep. I need full eight. To yeah, I mean, me too. You can have more than that as well if you want. Um, I'm down to sleep until like an hour before our meeting. To it's be a honest. it's a nice bed as well. This is the thing you probably haven't slept in a nice bed, drift possibly ever. I don't know. <laughs> Um, honestly, all of you, I don't know whether you've ever slept. This in a is nice unreal. Bed. Like, this is a cloud. That's why I did not care. This is unreal for me personally. Yeah, it's a decent bed, and it and it would be very Damn comfortable. Sure. And I think you'd probably get that sleep, like you <laughs> know, when you, when you when you haven't slept that well for a long time, and then you get really comfy, and you go into that weird deep twelve hour crazy sleep, which I've never done in my life, but it's possible. I've, I've heard. Um, 
And I'd say you probably head into that. I, uh, d meditation Rin and four hour to power down Warforged. Um, mm. After your four hours are up, um, do you guys just remain in the room or do you head out or anything like that? Um, I will actually probably remain in the room. Um, because we, we have to go together to a meeting anyway, so I'll wait till they wake up. Yeah. So I guess Probably you guys meditation. just relax um, mm -hmm. for the time being. And uh, yeah, morning. The, the whole evening will pass. Um, and it's a long time as well because you went to bed kind of early. Um, the town around you doesn't stop being loud like yeah, pretty much constantly um there's just noise because this town doesn't seem to go to sleep um this tavern doesn't seem to go to sleep um but i do think that you'll notice a point it does quieten down like a decent amount um <laughs> eventually um, in the very very early hours of the morning you'll notice that the majority of the people downstairs have stopped kind of like rowdily drinking um though you do hear the rumble and the movement and the conversations of lots of people still being down there it's nowhere near as much as it was during the peak hours um whoever is staying here has obviously gone to bed anybody who lives in town probably went home but this place does remain open you can still hear people drinking um and eating throughout the night um it seems like it doesn't close all night um i guess as long as i mean i can fast forward straight through to like middayish. If you're not thinking of doing anything, um, I have no other plans but that. Yeah, I, think, yeah. uh, I, I, think, <clears throat> I think in the morning I have to go over to put the get the armor put on me. I would need to, if I'm correct, because I would need to make sure I do it early because it could probably take a while. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> daylight, we'll say like dawn, mm -hmm. shows up, and I just leave. yeah, How about that nineteen. Living. I just go to the, go to the the nice forward him there. 19. Daylight. Hmm. Are you leaving? I'm like opening the door. Oh, yes. I'm going to go get the armor put on me. You can come watch if you like, or you can stay here with them. It's bound to be pretty boring, I assume. But if you've never seen a warforge get armor put on them, it's a it's a sight, I suppose. Okay, I can do that. Uh, we have to be back though for that for that meeting, or not back here. Mm. We're going to a different inn for a meeting with that contact that I told you about. Yes. Okay, so we'll go get your armor done first. I will join him. Okay. I get up. So um, dawn comes. I was going to mark on here where the other inn was for you because you had another place to go, but I didn't do it, and I will do it in a minute. Um, blue gnome. It is the blue gnome, indeed. Um, you each get up, head downstairs. Uh, you notice that Nefene, the elf, is no longer there, but there is a um, relatively large-looking halfling. Um, and by large, I mean tall, um, more so than kind of rotund, um, who seems to have hmm. taken her place. There's, there's a couple of people moving about behind the bar, but she seems to be running the bar at the moment. Um, as you head in, she doesn't even pay you much attention but heading downstairs to that bottom floor uh there are tables there is now this this place is free finally you can see from one end to the other relatively well there's still quite a lot of people in in here for this time in the morning for a for a for a pub um since it's only daybreak it's not really like breakfast you can't smell any food but there are a handful of people still sitting at the tables a few of them sitting on those outside tables um and it again it doesn't look like it's like closed at all throughout the night um assuming you guys just head out um are you just walking across town mm -hmm. which armor are you going to because you have the option of going to the blood grips the dwarves or going to the uh goliath 100 percent going to blood grips okay <laughs> i'm so excited for this <laughs> Uh, okay, so you head out, assuming you, again, you, you head <laughs> along this, this path, um, towards the north. Um, I guess I need to split the party here, so I'll just make two circles. Um, just following along, Rin? Yep. <laughs> okay, again, this, the city is still pretty busy. Um, it's still a pretty busy, um, place. You'd imagine that 
even at this time in the morning on a normal day it'd be quite busy but you're for sure you notice that it's nowhere near as as ram packed as it was yesterday um you move along this this main northern road wide enough for two carts um maybe looking at the houses in the morning sun Maybe a glint at that palace. There's a huge um, white sort of almost marble looking stained glass palace um, that sits um, up on a plateau to the right as you pass along. Eventually you come to the area where those docks are. You pass across that bridge. Um, you head past the temple to Lathinda. At this time in the morning at dawn, this is probably the most busy place um, on your journey so far. Uh, there's a lot of people going in and out of this temple at this time. Um, and then there's a lot of people wearing kind of robes. Um, they look like clerics and people who are members of the clergy and stuff like that for this temple. Um, just greeting people and meeting people along the street. Um, and uh, yeah, it's pretty busy as you move past this temple. Um, you can probably hear kind of a soft um, singing, kind of like hymns kind of singing. And then, you pass by. What are we laughing at? What have I done? <laughs> Got him! <laughs> what did I do? Nothing, our no, private. Oh, you not read private? Like, no, I didn't see it. Hang on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> disgusting. Okay, you guys are disgusting. Oh, uh, man. You get to this main trade road, and again, it's, it's, um, it's busy. <laughs> At the moment, you see a lot of people with produce, um, carts with oats and food and fruit, water, things like that, <clears> moving <throat> up and down, um, both from the north and the south. Uh, it doesn't re In fact, I would say it probably remains pretty busy even along this northern area because there's a lot of people coming from the farms in the north. So um, not as many people, but, but a lot of um, carts and produce. Eventually, you move along far enough to pass that area which smells real bad um the door which was open previously to the um the wizard and mug stands closed um but you're aware that a few doors down you come to a warehouse that is open and inside are many dwarves um this is kind of like this is a big open front building um this would look very similar to our sort of modern day aircraft hangar looking things like one of those ones that's just open at the front and it's just like a big kind of like metallic structure um there's a metal steel roof um over a brickwork warehouse and it's just open plan um very different to the forge that the goliath works out of it was a small enclosed space um down an alleyway um this is just open the dwarves are coming and going constantly um and there's a huge forge and some areas where you can smell iron and there's a few people um a few of these dwarves um working on on um armor swords um yeah. metallurgy you don't instantly recognize any of them here though none of them look like the ones that you spoke to yesterday um but there's just this kind of an enormous open plan forge um blood grip sign on one side um lots of stuff in there as well you can see um many tables with armor all different shapes and sizes swords crossbow bolts um, anything really metallic that you can imagine, you can kind of see it at a, at a glance. Um, and, uh, yeah, just dwarves. Just loads, like, there's probably about 15 in here. Holy crap. It's big. Uh, it's very big. Yes? I think that you should decline the offer from the blood grips. What do you mean? What offer? For armor. I think you should politely decline, and then we should cut ties with them. Mm. I'm sorry to hear that. I'll be having them put the armor on me. That's about it, though. I plan to do nothing else with them. You don't even think I should get the armor from them, huh? No, I don't. Mm. I think the contact that I spoke to, if you do enter the tournament, if that's something that you are serious about doing, I think that they will outfit you with better armor. Mm. Well, we're here now. You chose to say that as we arrived. Well, I still think that you should see them, but tell them politely that you don't. 
The issue is that this armor will not take a short period of time to put on. This won't be a quick fix. It's up to you. I'm just giving you my opinion. Mm. Mm. He just kind of sits there for a couple minutes. One second. I keep forgetting I just switched to Firefox, so I keep looking for Chrome when I want to roll stuff. Mm, I'm going to decide this for myself. I think I've decided I'm going to have them cast me with the armor. If the uh, people that want to do me in the tournament want to give me anything better, so be it. If they would like to add it on to me, the more armor I have, the stronger I'll be. So if I get this armor put on and then they would decide they want to put more armor on me, well, that wouldn't be a bad thing. Okay, but their condition was that you don't do any business with the blood grips. So just keep that in mind. Can I roll an insight check on that? You can. <clears throat> 14. I mean, she's telling the truth, lying. so she doesn't need I'm to con lying. contest it. It seems like she's telling the truth to you. She's not lying. Mm. Try not to work with the blood grips. No. Mm. If they want me to fight for them. Or anything. Do you know the reason for this? I don't, but you can ask yourself today mm. when we meet with them. I start slowly walking towards the blood grips. I will wait out here. Sounds good. Uh, okay, so you head in. There is, um, again, there's, there's just 15 different dwarfs moving around, and they look very similar. Um, each of them has um, that thick kind of curly black hair. Um, they're all wearing... Um, like leather overalls they've got thick gloves on some of them have um big kind of hats that they wear over their face with with um leathers that come down and these kind of like goggle like things um in the front um i'd say as you uh as you head in and maybe like look to one look to another and maybe kind of stall trying to work out who to speak to um mm. one of the more central looking dwarves turns around and just kind of like looks up at you and realizes that you're there all of a sudden takes a step back um he uh he again just looks like he's wearing sort of very basic tunic um a leather apron and some old boots um thick kind of um curled black hair thick um bushy beard um sort of grayish sort of skin um he looks a little sickly for a dwarf and uh, as he sort of looks like hey, hey. Can I help mm. you? Real quick, Brad, out of character, because I apparently didn't write it down. What was the gentleman's name that I spoke with? Uh, Telchul, Telchul Bloodgrip was the guy that you spoke to yesterday. Telchul. Zigamil okay. is the dwarf that he wants to marry. Yep. And the fourth yep, special. Yep. Mm. Give me his name one more time. I want to write it down, actually. Uh, Telchul. I, I put it in the thing. Oh, yeah. Put it in the thing? In Roll20. Oh, I lost my pen. You hate when somebody's getting on Steam and it blocks what you're trying to read. Yes, I'm here to see Telchul Bloodgrip if he is around currently. Uh, hey, Telchul's here. Uh, he's coming in late today. I'm in charge here and name's Gammon. I can help. What's the matter? Well, I, were you with the group yesterday at the bar when I was there? Uh, no, I don't think we've ever met. Well, my name is 19 and I extend my hand to him. You can hear all of this, Rin. He says, uh, uh, 19, hey, how can I help? You're on a, you're a messenger? No, I, w <laughs> well, I spoke with Teltrol yesterday and we had, uh, come to a conclusion that you lot might be able to help me with a set of armor. He said that you would be able to do it the best in the city. Uh, with that being said, you have multiple dwarves and I'm a warforge. I want to try to get this done quick. The place I'd went before would have had one person working on me, whereas here there would be, what, uh, it looks like maybe up to three to four of you, which would make the process go much, much faster. I'd also talked to Chel Teltra, and he also had commented that he'd probably potentially be able to help me out a little bit and give me something a little stronger than normal for the price I'm paying, because I delivered him apparently some very good news the other day. Uh, him not being here complicates this, I feel. 
Because I don't assume you're not going to take my word for any of this. Oh, I, I know, I know. I, he told me about you now. That's right, mm -hmm. you're the one that brought him all that good news. I suppose. I'm not quite sure what was good news or not. I was just a messenger. Hey, he winks at you a couple of times. Right. That's good. Mm -hmm. So you uh... I thought you were supposed to be coming back last night, nay, and, and, and working uh, the other job, or nay? Nay, uh, I had never agreed to come back and work any jobs or anything along those lines. It was a conversation I'd be trying to figure out over the night. And to be honest with you, with everything that happened last night, it's probably a good thing I did not come. And you kind of like, you kind of like his eyes, like his pupil parts just kind of get wider towards, uh, oh, and, and, and we lost John. John, John's having <laughs> problems. Mm. Okay. John, we're just going to have to. <laughs> It always messes up in the Zoom call, by the way. I can Hello? fix it, but I know that as soon as I fix it, he'll come back. Hang on. Let's see if I can just do this. I was watching the other, like, while I was role-playing, I was, like, watching the other screen, and, like, I, like, saw that only you see my eyes, and I got really I can confused. do this for now. We're all in the wrong places, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> Should we go we? back into it? No, I don't have anything to cover. That's pretty yeah, funny. It's, like, at the top of my head in Boston. Part of your sweatshirt. <laughs> there you go. Um, it's just Brad's breasts. Oh, there we go. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, the dwarf um, turns to you and, and says, Right, so yous are purchasing armor, and we're putting it on yous, yeah? Uh, correct, and from what I've understood, you guys are familiar with how to put Warforged armor on a Warforged, because it's not as simple as putting it over my head and my shoulders. It must be forged genuinely onto me. You, I assume you being a blacksmith, you know this, correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been doing this a while. I can forge anything. Uh, I just expect the lush to come, well, not like... Crack of the day, you know, it's just started, but I we can do it. So he's, uh, you got the funds. That's what three hundred well, gold. Uh, from gold. what I understood, it was two hundred for the armor I'm looking for. Give me a persuasion check. <clears throat> I have never once rolled high on a persuasion check with Cooper Cakes <laughs> or character. Uh, let me see if I can get John back. Mm -hmm. I see. I don't think I've ever rolled a persuasion check in any, even the one shots. I think we did. I think I had to roll a persuasion check. I got a crit one. My characters do not persuade ever. It just never works. Yeah, ever. he's back. Yay! Um, kinda. And now everyone's in the wrong places. Uh, <laughs> Dude, PP turn yours off and turn it back on. Yeah, nice. Um, so annoying. It's okay. You just. Um, suffer many penalties during the <laughs> tournament Dude, when it comes around. I even was whis whispering to them. I'm like, my internet just keeps going in and out right now. This is so my, weird. Mine is doing weird spotty things as well. Apologies, chat. It's okay. It doesn't matter. Um, the, uh, the dwarf kind of like s folds his arms and says, I perhaps, uh, perhaps you should come back when Telchel's here, no? Mm. I'm not too I sure. I, do, I, I don't. I don't think uh, I, he did tell me about you, but he didn't tell us that we're going to be doing any work. He said that you'd come back doing some work for him last night, and then uh, perhaps I don't know. He said he gave you some gold. That's it. I don't know. He said he's some sort of messenger, but I, I didn't know he was going to be doing any work on you. I did think that we'd have to do some work on some Warforge, eh? New contracts and all that, but eh, not today. I wasn't expecting it, so perhaps maybe mm. uh, you can come back this afternoon. I have no problem coming back this afternoon, but I will have you know that the standard price for the mail I'm looking for, or the armor I'm looking for, is around 200. If you are charging more for it, that is understandable, but I will be honest with you, I was gifted uh, uh, 250 from your, your lord last night, and at this current time, I have 250. In fact, I'd planned on spending 200 and having 50 left over for, well, myself. So I'm curious, if I may ask, why would it be that the armor here is 300 instead of 200, like most places, if I may? No, I'm not, uh... Well, well, you, well, it'd be 200, but it's about 100 gold to install it, no? Mmm, I see what you're saying. Well, just... I've got 250 at the current moment. 
How would you feel about taking 250 for it? Can we negotiate this? I'm trying to get it done before midday today. Give me a persuasion check. Okay. Here we go. Watch crit one. Not even looking oh! at it. Natural 20. 20 22. Natural he says, uh, I, I suppose, I mean, he did mention you'd be coming by. I just wasn't expecting it. I, uh, we'll have to get some stuff set up, prepared. Uh, we'll get, like, get, get the lights together. We're not re ready, but we can be. So, uh, why don't you give us, uh, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, come back. I'll set up a surface and we'll get to it. I think that's a great idea. In fact, take your time. Have you ate yet? Hey. Mm. I've already started work. I just wasn't expecting to be doing this straight away. I was going to offer, if you'd like, I could get you a round of beers or some food while I wait. Would you like that? Uh, 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 well, I suppose, yeah, why not? You can go and pick us up some beers. Well, I can do that for you. Where's, is there anywhere specific you'd like them? Oh, no, you, I'd have to head down to the end. Probably find our mug. mug's not like going to be open drinks. yet. You know, you'd have to find someone on the road, probably. I'll figure it out. Right. Take your time. I'll be back in 20. Thank ne you. No bother. Right, boys, we got some work coming in. That's a weird one, though. He turns around. Yeah, you're all for that. You're all for that. Uh, bring that over here. We have to clear this surface. He just starts immediately getting to work to prepare. Um, you heading outside? I do, but I have one thing I'd like to say real quick. Mm -hmm. I would like to use something. I would like to use the... I have three left. The, uh, what you call it, if I roll a 20, I would yeah. like to use that for persuasion. Proficiency. Oh my oh god, no, he's John. gone again. Rip. Um, the persuasion proficiency. I can drag us all oh. back. No, I can't. Here we go. Hello. There we are. Um, okay, so you have three left. So I'd be using one of you the say? three. Yep. Let's have a look here. 19. Three left. Uh, okay. So, yeah, you can uh, take a proficiency in persuasion. He has a thing in his... Um, in His background is sort of like an amnesiac where he's only just been born, but he does have some skills that he's proficient in from when he served in the war um, many moons ago. Um, I would say... Um... You are proficient in persuasion. Um, maybe not because you've ever really... Warforged don't really speak um, before they're kindled. They have the ability to, but they have no, re no real need to converse with anyone or anything like that. They, can, they only speak when they're ordered to or they need to. Um, but you've probably just seen so many interactions over the years um, with high-level... Um, officers and nobles and um people who have that kind of gift of the gap um that it just kind of filtered through and you kind of get this um 73 years worth of of um memories or muscle memory almost of seeing all these people and all these little tricks of the trade seeing a guy who kind of sold ice to an eskimo kind of um silver-tongued approach um and it you just you just pick up on a few things is some you have some not really like direct memories that come back but just you kind of remember oh if i speak in this way if i use this tone of voice if i mm, lever this from somebody or i haggle in this way with this thing this might help me to persuade somebody to do something um and help somebody out um I think it really fits his character, the way he's being role-played and stuff like that. I think that getting Persuasion is a really cool one to get for, for 19. Yeah, the first thing you ever tried to do was haggle stout boots. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, yep. So it makes sense. And, uh, yeah, I think you just... you you just Because you're pretty old. You are 73, technically. Um, so you just get all that. You just get it back. You just kind of understand persuasive speech charismatic ways of of um getting people to do what you want in some way um just naturally 
um, from seeing other people do it. I don't think it's really anything that warrants anything in your previous backstory here um, that would that really relates to anything. So you don't get any I think like, it's kind huge of... memories that come back, but I think you probably, yeah, you understand I think it's that, kind of, that situation. Yeah, it's just kind of a cool one for him because he's like, this is like the first one that is more of a natural for him instead of a rec like a memory, right? So I feel like it's a good thing to have because it shows 19 growing up as a not a warrior. It shows him growing up as like himself, I think, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Yeah. Um, so you head back outside. I know that the overlay is wrong. I don't care at this point. It's just going to be wrong for a few minutes until John comes back. Um, uh, if I keep changing it, it's going to be a nightmare. Um, the, uh, yeah, so I guess 19, you head back outside. Rin, you heard all that stuff. Actually, I can probably do this. Hang on. Mm -hmm. This probably wouldn't be too difficult to do. Um, you heard all that entire exchange. Um, you know now that you've broken your terms of service <laughs> contract <Yep>. <laughs> with, <laughs> with the K Kasharian um, in that he is going to be um, doing this business and it was pretty much their mm. one um, thing. So um, what do you do? Anything in that 25? Are you looking for somewhere to buy yeah, a I beer? Leave. Yeah, I leave. Oh, you just leave? Yep. Okay. 19. Uh, if if I walk, when I walk outside, the first thing I look for is anybody that might be selling beers or anywhere that might sell beers to buy the crew that is forging armor on me. Beers, because okay. they're dwarves. Yeah, you can give me a perception or an investigation check. Okay. 23. Bam, you walk outside and there's a cart going past with kegs on it. Beer kegs. How much? Okay. Uh, sir, if I may. At the uh, the head of the car is a kind of weary-looking, thin human. Uh, yes. He stops his donkey. I usually would not ask this, but how much for one of those kegs in full? Oh, what now? Yes. Um, uh, I don't know. They're not mine. But I tell you what, mm. I don't think they'd notice if one went missing. Hey. How about I give you two gold for one? Ha! <laughs> yeah, that's funny. That is funny. All right, you having one or not? Well, how much would you want for one? Well, I think they sell these for like 100 gold apiece. 100 gold apiece. How much would it cost me if I could by chance get uh, four to eight servings from you for these dwarves in this? And I point back to the place right behind me. They're going to be forging armor on me in the next 20 minutes to an hour. You know how dwarves are, don't you? The more drunk they are, the better they do their jobs. Uh, uh, I'd right. like to have a great job done. Have you ever seen, actually, in fact, have you ever seen a war forged have armor put on them? Yeah, I'm quite busy. Thank you. Quite. Thank you very mm. much. Good day. Do you not have... Mm. All right. He starts trudging along. Uh, give me another perception check. Mm. 20. You see the Wizard and Mug, which is that pub that you were in yesterday. Okay, uh, I'll go in there and grab a couple drinks to take with me back, hopefully. Yeah, you head over to the Wizard and Mug, rap on the door. It's locked. <clears throat> it is like 6 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, maybe, maybe like, mm, yeah, maybe about half six in the morning. Mm. It's very early. <laughs> I have a really, really bizarre question, Brad. Yeah. That guy was old, right? Kind of scrawny, so he's not moving very fast, so I can kind of still see him walking away. Probably, yeah. I'd like to go back in to the place and offer them a hundred gold keg of beer in payment for a hundred gold of of the thing. Just to see if they'd say yes to it. Because if they do, I'll go buy a whole keg for them of beer. The... Dwarves immediately say no. <laughs> okay. That's uh, completely fine. Mmm. Mm, everything's closed. It's too early right now. Excuse me, sir. Sir or ma'am. You two walking together. Yes. Pardon me. Yes. How can I help? D 
do you by chance know anywhere I might be able to get a few drinks this early in the morning? I have some armor to be forged on me, and, well, it's getting done by dwarves. So, the, uh, you know how it goes. The man, the couple, they're like a married couple, maybe in their 30s. The man says, I didn't think your type drank. Oh, no, no. It's, it's, it's not for myself, you see, and I kind of, like, nod my head over... In about 20 to 30 minutes, I'm going to be getting some armor cast on me. Have you ever seen Warforged armor cast on to one of us before? Honey, he's scaring me. Yes, I'm sorry. We don't have time. Have a wonderful day. Good day. Scaring you. Mm. They scurry away. Can I do one more perception check to see if I see any place that might have drinks? You can give me an insight check to try and figure out why people think you're an insane person. Sure. 18. It is 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. And you just keep telling people this random story and just approaching them. And you are big and scary looking. And mm. you keep just clanking over to people and asking them for drinks and then starting about this story about all these dwarves that are going to be doing some work on you. And it's freaking people out. Mm. I don't know why everybody doesn't like me. I don't know what I did. Now, where did Rin go? No sign of Rin. Hmm. Well, I guess that's that. I'm gonna head back over to the the armory. Okay. Um, the uh, dwarves are kind of set up, and they've set aside a kind of huge area um, on a table. Um, the guy that introduced himself to you before, Gammon, says, uh, Hey, you just lay here. Uh, we'll do the rest. We're gonna have to put this on you. We'll put this here. Do you- do you feel pain? I've started to. I don't really recall when it started. A lot of it had to do with fire. So if you- Oh, right. Right, right. we can't do it that way then. Right. Hmm. We was just gonna, like, weld it on, you know. Like, that's as far as I'm aware, the only way we can do it, but I am aware that some of you can feel pain, right? Mm. So, yes. I'm not too sure, kill? like, I think you're just gonna have to grit your teeth, do you have teeth, do you know the phrase? And then, mm. or, or, we're gonna have to, we'll, ha we'll go find a mage. I will grit my teeth. Right. I've been alive long enough. Okay. And I will deal with it. I want you to remember, please, though. Do not forget my head. I'm sorry. We're not going to be taking you apart, lad. That's crazy. You'll die. We're going to no. be putting this on top of you like this. See this? And yes. The, the, one of the doors behind, like, hefts up this big-looking thing. It, and it just looks the same as your chest, but, like, thicker. Um, it has a couple of pauldrons on the top that look much larger than your shoulder area that you have just these kind of like circular looking pauldrons um and then this this plated area that starts to move down and then there are these sections that just look like random metal but they would go on your legs um mm -hmm. and arms um Do you... he just hefts them out he says right that's gonna go on you there i yes. gonna protect all your inside bits do you have the piece that goes around my draw line in the back of my head what? What? Do we have anything like that? Yeah, no, I don't think so. No, you have to understand that we only just <gasps> got these contracts, like... Well, technically, we haven't even got it yet. Like, we thought <clears> it was <throat> going to be this week, but... So, we, and it's been a while since we've done this, since the war. So, uh, the bits, the parts, <clears throat> are hard to come by, so we're just going with what we got here. Right. Good. Very well, then. I guess the best thing we could do is get begun and... We can come back later and speak about, maybe when, uh, tell Charles back, we can speak about a headpiece. And right. a piece that could wrap around my face. Aye, this, is, this is gonna take a while, to be honest, so maybe yes. by the time it's done, tell Charles will be here anyway. Uh, if he's not feeling too rough, we might be able to get him the help with the last bites. And I'll see if I can get something to go around the neck and around the jawline. I'd be grateful for that, and I lay down. Right. And when I lay down, I also, I lay down flat and I look back at him one more time and I go, That metal rod over there, the one right there? Yeah. May I have that for a moment? Uh, 
Hey, support is going like the bar here. Hey. There you go. Takes it. Puts it in between his mouth, like where his mouth would open. And he bites down on it, and he nods. Yeah, the forge goes up. The uh, dwarves move in on all sides and start lowering bits onto you. And uh, then the sounds of burning, fiery things start to... Uh, Start to fill this warehouse around you. Give me a constitution saving throw with disadvantage. Because this is going to sting like fuck. Yeah, it's not going to feel good. <laughs> this is going to be worst. This is going to be the worst surgery you've ever experienced. Um, okay. They start working on you 19. And we sideswipe away. Rini, you heading anywhere in particular? Just do we just hear his screams? For, for sure. <laughs> for sure. It's, it's um, truly Yeah, awful. I mean, it's it's still early in the morning, so I'll actually just head back to the tavern. Yeah. Uh, yep, maybe if Eero and Drift are still sleeping, I might wake them. Um, yeah, I imagine that um, Drift is in the deepest sleep you've ever seen. Um, uh -huh. In that comfortable bed. Yeah, he, I have one arm. He had... Cross. He had expressed that he wanted to uh, have a nice lay-in because the bed looked so comfy. Um, I look at them kind of cuddling and definitely deep in sleep uh, mm -hmm. for a minute and then I just leave again and go back downstairs and get some breakfast. Yeah, yeah, and you can see the um, the halfling woman, she delivers you some breakfast. She, does, she seems pretty nonplussed by, like, anything going on. Um, and... Uh, then let me just throw this on here because that is where the uh pub is you need to go yeah you get you get some uh some breakfast i think we'll go to a break there i'll see if we can grab john back okay. i don't know what's going on with his internet we'll go to an early break um because i want to see if we can find him and then when we return perhaps john will be back if he's not we'll just carry on we'll fast forward to uh the absolute Frankenstein's monster that is being crea created by a bunch of evil dwarves on the other side of town. Please, please just tell me that 19 gets them drunk enough so that they inscribe no regrets on his chest. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I uh, think, can I, can I ask you a question, Brad? Yeah, I haven't rolled for them yet. Can I ask you a question as far as like, did you kind of have, and this is just for, this is probably for canon and also for everybody that's listening. Did you have, uh, so depending on who I picked to do the armor, if it would have been dwarfs or this, is the armor going to look different? Yeah. That's dope. That's kind. That's really cool. I was really hoping for that. Yeah. It's like uh, the Skyrim armor. It's, it's the fucking, it's that dwarf style versus like. <laughs> yeah. Well, I also love that like I'm all black, right? Like my entire body's black. So whatever they're forging on me, I assume is like a standard, what, like the color of like a silver or something like that, right? Yeah, it's steel. just steel. There is no, there is yeah, no paint job to it. They, they've shown you it. It's, it's uh, plain steel. There's no, there's no wash to it. Um, it is there a symbol on it? Just out of curiosity. Not anymore. Um, Maybe you can rent paint. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, it just it looks like um, bald fucking car parts, you know, like just picking up, just like completely uh, unpainted, or maybe that it was painted once and they've washed it down to plain. Um, but they just picked up all this kind of like chunky metal, um, and then just like welded it to you, and it is horrific, pain wise. Um, yeah, we'll come back to that. We'll deal with that. I'm gonna see if we can grab John. Um, he says he's back. I feel empty without him. Um, we'll go to a <laughs> short break and then we'll do the uh, the second half as a slightly longer section. See you guys in a few minutes. Thanks for hanging out. Um, and uh, be careful who Burp. you who you get your armor from. All right, hold on. What's going on? My internet's not working now. All right, hopefully we'll be back. There it is. Bye. Back in a minute. <laughs>
Hello everybody and welcome back. Not only are we all back, but also we are all back. AKA John Sandman. Oh, Remember John Sandman? Yo! Remember John Sandman in who plays Rin on a stone, the high elf knight? <laughs> and uh Pumpkinberry who plays Oh, did we forget to do the switch? Drift. Do the switch. Yes. Alright, ready no. for this? Triggers me out. No, you don't need to do it. I right. think it's just right. me. I yeah. think it's just me that needs to do it. Done. I just want to turn it off for fun. Done. Thanks, peeps. Look, they're all back. Wonderful. So I think we can. Sorry about um, that. Now, uh, I think we can fast forward through some time here, up to about yes. Um, yes, we'll say maybe 11 a.m. Um, you uh, notice that, um, in fact, uh oh, Rin. Give me two yes. perception checks for the time. Are you just sure. co coaching up in the iron well and holding a table? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yep. She's just swinging it around. <laughs> what did um, I miss? I'm so excited to hear. Like, 23 and a 7. 23. Mm -hmm. And a 7. Yes. There's a point um, in the uh, in the morning, and it will probably be pretty close to um, just before um, Drift and Iridir head into the... in or down back down into the tavern. Um... You've probably eaten some food. You've maybe got a drink in front of you, and you notice that the place is starting to fill up. Um, in the uh, uh, on the other side of the of the inn, somebody walks in, and it is the drow that you recognise. Give me uh, pff, ugh, a history or a nature check, I guess. Five. Five. Yeah, I think you, I, I was just wondering if you knew much about Drow. Those are the rules we all know and love from Pumpkinberry. <laughs> drow, um, Drow are not very common. Um, they remain sort of traditionally quite an evil underground race, um, and uh, they're not they're not too often spied. Um, just casually walking around. Um, I think you spy that same drow that you saw down an alleyway um though she doesn't see you at first she walks in heads up to the bar um and begins to speak with that halfling um quite quickly um the halfling can i, over, can I try to listen in you or was me, that my second perception no it wasn't you can give me a perception check to try and listen yeah for sure 13 13 it's very difficult to hear over the people um and again i think they're at the the further end of the bar from you okay. um they they speak briefly um even if you like go to maybe head towards the area or something like that um the conversation ends very quickly and the uh the half elf hands over a small um pouch um looks like a pouch maybe with money in um and then the drow goes to leave again and that is when she spots you at the table um again she stops and she cocks her head and looks at you. She looks around a little bit and uh, then <clears throat> she shakes her head and then walks out. She shakes her head at me like no, or she nods at me. She shakes her head. She looks around, oh. she shakes her head at you, kind of like a, and then she just turns and walks out. What? Can I roll an insight? <laughs> I don't know what she's trying to fucking tell me. Uh, you can roll an insight, yeah. Okay. Is she telling me to leave? 14? Um, at your best guess, I will whisper you what you think. Oh She's my god. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> oh my god, this is so intense! Where are you whispering it? Uh, on Discord. That's what she, that's what you, that's what you assume she's trying to say to you here. Um, okay. Do you do anything? Do you re respond in any way? I sip my tea. Your tea. Yep. Okay. Um, and you, uh, very shortly after that, I joined as I assume Iridir and uh, Drift probably head downstairs. They were planning on he like staying in bed as long as they could. Um, assume we so can assume that Iridir is clothed again. You guys have had a really great night's sleep. Um, for the record, everybody, awesome, by everybody the way. has had a long rest. You so will never not want to cuddle again because you don't realize <laughs> that it wasn't the bed. You thought it was people you know, cuddling you. I thought it was the bed. <laughs> you, uh, Listen, I was warm. Who, who said it wasn't? 
<laughs> you're right you're right you yeah everybody okay. for the record you've had a long rest um so you can have half of your hit die back and you're at full health and full spell slots um <laughs> you guys are super well rested you've had a great night um in the bed um it doesn't give you any extra boons or anything but you've you know, you feel great. Um, you head down and there is a reserve table. And I presume, like, I feel like you guys have kind of carved out an area of this place just to the right of the door that leads up to your room. Um, on the right-hand side of the Ironwell Inn, on the, on the right-hand side of the bar. Um, it gives you a pretty decent view of the room. But again, it is starting to fill up pretty quickly. People are coming here for breakfast. Um, and, uh, yeah, as you guys head in, you notice that the... Um, the uh, the owner um, comes back, Nefene, and sort of um, speaks briefly with the halfling, and then the I halfling. I watched this exchange. Yeah. Can I see? If there's a discussion here, or an exchange of that fucking pouch. Yeah, sure. You can give me an insight check from afar, yes, or a, or you can head closer and give me a perception nope. check. I'm gonna do it from afar. Six. I see nothing. Oh, you fail. Crit fail. Yeah, yeah I, I think um, I'll, I'll say that maybe um, Nefine just turn, <laughs> it has her back to you and the, the whole conversation is clearly an exchange, but you can't see. She's speaking like down to the halfling All for right. a little bit. Um, they speak about something. The halfling takes off her own kind of apron and things and puts it on the I think, side. I think what happens she is heads Rift out. is ordering breakfast and you hear me say... Oh, I would have thought you've had your fill of sausage. Say that to Drift. You do not do say that to me! <laughs> yeah, I say that to Drift as he's ordering breakfast. And Rin probably hears that. I'm like, what? Mm. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you don't you don't see what they... But it seems like they're kind of changing of the guard. Like, their shifts are changing. She's taking over the, the day shift and the... Um, the halfling Perfect. heads out. She just walks, like, straight out. Um... And uh, Nefane just starts serving people. Um, every now and then, like, some serving boys and girls came, come from uh, a door which is behind the bar um, and bring out food to people. And if you guys order breakfast of any kind, then um, they'll bring that out to you. I'm just going to fast forward through all that stuff. I'm constantly if you want breakfast, you just jibes. I'm constantly making jibes at Drift. Like, and I would have been like, that was very comfortable last night, Drift. I have to say... <laughs> That bed was excellent. Yeah, the bed was uh, amazing. And you're so warm. Thanks. You just seem to radiate warmth. That's the way I'm. A, I'm a tiefling. A plate lands. A plate lands in front of you, <laughs> and a, a strange-looking um, man with a balding head and two front teeth missing just pushes it. A boiled eggs is it? There you go. And a baked chicken. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank and you so much, pot. sir. You wanted a pot of boiling water to make tea with, was oh, it? There I, you go. I already have the pot right, of boiling right, water. No if I can have Thank two you. more mugs, that would be great. <laughs> yeah, Thanks. Two mugs. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, he, he, this guy just is wandering around. There's a few people like that. They look like um, kitchen staff kind of thing. And uh, yeah, they, they, they bring you over some mugs. And I assume you guys, because the thing is, you also have not had any of this fucking tea since yesterday it's no. been forever yeah, so long this is the first time yeah well, i was about i was about to start the, giving you like massive stuff, right? massive exhaustions for mm. your lack of uh rin's magical tea um this is the new stuff unless i mean you still have some of the older batch i do but, but i want to try the new stuff wait this is new stuff yeah i'm gonna try the new stuff from the lady because if it's shit i want to throw it in the face <laughs> fresh <laughs> uh can... give me a d20 yep <clears throat> Be a 20. Oh, good. PB 16. rolling. 16. It's pretty good. It's pretty fresh. <laughs> yeah. not, not the freshest you've ever had in your long, right. long life, but it is. Uh, but it is. Pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah, you'd imagine that this is some of the freshest stuff that's come through. Um, and I think you guys that are drinking the tea would, would recognize that as well um, in the taste. It's fucking good, is the best way I can describe that. But it's not as good as the original, like the first time we had it, right? I can't remember. I think it probably is better though, because it's fresh. It's a Tylenol bottle. Just work with me, all right? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Please. Oh God. Oh no! I just. Oh no! I'm doing a wax, Steven. I'm opening pretty, Photoshop. It's pretty good. <laughs> it's happened to you. 
I mean, it could be fresher, but you know, that's that's. I don't. I don't know how you get much fresher than that. That was excellent. Mm. Mm. It's very good. So, I, you had oh, a good I feel treat. wonderful. I Absolutely, I feel wonderful. Sup, great. You guys have not got long to get to your meetings. Oh, oh, we should. <laughs> we should have our tea and breakfast. It's about half eleven. It's time for me to go to a meeting. Wait, oh, we no. have a meeting too. I know you do. I know you do. Who are you meeting with? That contact I told you about. Just to oh. decline. Just to decline. You want me to decline a contact? No, no, no. Me. Don't even worry about it. Oh, I'll see someone, you after your meeting. Is it someone you know? Uh, yeah. Just met them the other day, actually. Nice. Trying yeah. to get some armor. So what, what are you working on? Um, sex, mostly. No. Oh. Well done. Thank you. I, I, the tea misses my mouth and it goes down. Ow. Well, you um, have a good meeting, Drift. I'm, I'm... You, yeah, you have a great meeting. Don't Thank worry, you. I'll look after him. I'll make sure that things go well. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. Yes, have some excellent sex. I will, I will. Thank you. So you guys split up and uh, head out. Um, elsewhere across town, um, 19, you've been passed out for about three hours. Yeah, because of the pain, I would assume, right? Absolutely. <laughs> the pain, what did I miss? They are still <laughs> working. Like there's probably, like we get like an, like a, like an outside of the warehouse shot of like sparks flying out. Um, so there's like, oh, a, dent putting there's like a dent in that rod in my mouth. There's like a dent in it. So <laughs> hard. There's, yeah, there's like, there's a couple of like voices from inside like, oh, fuck, that doesn't go there. What have we done? Uh, wait, no, that doesn't go there, right? Right, hey, right, right. Is he alive? Quick, get that potion. Get that potion down his neck. His neck? Does he drink? I don't know. Does it work? I hope so. Just, just throw it on him. Um, bzz, bzz, ding, 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 ding. Ah, fuck. Um, is going on inside that warehouse. Um, Sounds like a typical dwarf warforge, right? It's like a fucking A team, like mechanical yeah. montage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's going on. Um, but they're still working on you. It's it's taking a, it's taking longer than they uh than they expected. Um. <laughs> so. Uh, let's see here. Why don't we have Iradir and Rin roll me initiatives. This is just to see where we go. Just click the button. Nine, Nine. from Rin. Fourteen. Fourteen from Iradir. We'll go to the Boulder Down Estate first. <laughs> um, so, you guys know where this place is in the sense that they told you and described where it is. Um, yeah, they said where to meet. Yeah, they, they, I, I sort of just didn't explain it at the time, but they basically, ex they told you with relatively decent detail where the Boulder Down estate is. Um, give me investigation checks. Glad they finally get to roll something. 19. At least you didn't load up Photoshop. <laughs> eight eight for me didn't you do it the other day with the uh yes, I do it all yeah, the time. With, uh, what was it um right I, it's on my friggin task bar, so i accidentally I click it, it yeah. constantly hope we got damn time um why does this not work either so uh what did you roll you boys i got an eight 19. for investigation oh great um so um drift is probably getting distracted um, while you're dragging him along, um, he keeps getting distracted by things, and you're like, "Oh no, we we have to go down this road, and then we have to pass this building described this way, and then we have to move past this small military tower." Um, Why can't I get my statue? Where here? Where it is. Um, we have to go to the meeting first. Yeah, but like, what if we just on the way to the meeting we grab a statue? No, we're near the meeting. <laughs> it's on the other side of the city. Whoa. Uh, it's What's not really. That? It's pretty close. It's, uh... <laughs> He's lying to me. He's just not gonna tell me. Just, it's pretty close. Lying. It's not far. Um, for you guys, it's like, it's like here. It's near the palace. Um, so, uh, let me bring... So, it's... You pretty much just head and along this road. And I also ask a ton of questions, so I am definitely... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're doing constantly. like the, are we there yet kind of kid I thing. I can't remember if, if we knew that we weren't coming back for the statue. 
I don't know that at all. I don't think, yeah, I don't think you guys ever would have thought about that yet, probably. Yeah, yet. and you, you're probably going to have the, I mean, you... We're probably going to have Oh, <laughs> God. You know that oh, it went... God, it I mean, so Iridir was aware that it went horribly wrong. Um, but, okay. you know, it, it. I think it's... I mean, it's up to you guys how you interpret that. We didn't, that, we but. didn't do anything. Um, I mean, really, Griff still be excited about his, his statue? It makes totally. sense. And you, uh, yeah, you guys follow down this road here. So this is actually kind of like a gated community um, area. Um, and once you move along this road, this is still a relatively large road, but um, there's way less people on it. Um, and when you start moving down it, you notice that there's a lot more of these sort of um, nobility... Um, there are a few kind of knights that trudge up and Dang. down in in very thick kind of armor, very similar to what you saw Sir Sieg wearing. Um, the the red sash on the back, the large sword. Um, they don't really acknowledge you at all um, as they walk along, um, but the uh, the other nobles might do. Your drift is still wearing his he is, Lord yeah. Fauntleroy. Fall out, yeah. yeah. The, okay. the 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 knights don't, but the the people do. And they go, oh, good day as they walk along in their like <laughs> fi their own finery. You know, they're like heading off. Oh, absolutely, yes. The houses um, down here are real nice. Um, they're super nice. They um, they kind of start to get larger and more. Um, uh, separate as you move down then you come to an area which has actual kind of greenery some of these houses are like chateaus um, and stately homes that are separate completely they have their own grounds in very small fenced off areas um and that's what you're looking for and you're aware of it again i feel like you kind of just have this innate description um as you move along you find um what you're looking for and and it's pretty close to where this palace is you can see a bunch of these stately homes surrounded by some grounds small areas they're not huge again it's not like this wide wide expanse but they have like a garden which in this area is like it's unreal um and uh in again you're getting close to the palace the palace is now kind of further down this road beyond a small walled off area with its own separate walls that lead up onto a natural plateau um you come to the area that you know, I mean, Iridia, you are the one that really spots it, um, is the uh, Boulder Down Chateau. Um, and it's pretty obvious you're looking for a specifically architectured building. Um, it's this two-story kind of stately home um, set behind a set of walls and gates. Um, there's its own lawn that runs up to a red brick building with blue slate uh, roofing. Um, it's got a couple of pillars with pointed towers on it as well, making it kind of look somewhat kind of gothic architecture for what we would expect. Um, and the building itself is almost as large as the Iron Well Inn. Um, you approach the gate, I assume? Yes. Yes, definitely. Um, oh, I think this is it. There is a gentleman there. Um there is a private guardsman who holds up his hand as you, as, like as soon as you get close, you see him spy you walking up the road and he holds up his hand and says, uh, Iridir and Drift, the curse breaker. That's us, yes. That's us, yeah. Uh, my name is Kerbin. Welcome to the Boulder Down Estates. This is uh, Boulder Down Chateau. Uh, that's Elven for castle, apparently. Let me take <laughs> you to the drawing room. And he turns around and opens one of the gates. He appears to How be like the only speaker? person. I'm doing very well, thank you, sir. He is in like nice clothes. He doesn't really look like a guard. He has a long sword on his hip, which looks pretty standard. But he doesn't look like Ornament. he could. He doesn't look like he could fight his way out of the paper bag. He looks more like a butler. Um, he uh, he opens this this gate and um, heads in. Um, he takes you inside you walk past you're sort of walking along a very small stone walkway um the lawn spread out on either side of you and uh again they look well kept it's nothing like super fancy like this this city isn't really old enough to have these enormous crazy aged estates um uh, but you do have this kind of like basic grass lawn which is kept um, which in of itself is pretty insanely fancy but to us and our modern day eyes we wouldn't be blown away by it necessarily um 
as you approach the manor house, there are a bunch of several, like, there's, like, all these steps that lead up um, to a, a large open doorway. Kerbin leads you into an entrance hall that has this, like, golden chandelier. Um, there's, like, oil paintings. There's two pretty large oil paintings, which, again, would, like, stand out to you guys who... Drift, you've lived outside as an outlander for most of your yeah. life. Um, Iridir, similar. Um... You have these big ornamental things on this wall. One of the paintings is of um, a very stern looking man with a thick gray mustache in like plate armor standing next to a very large Irish wolfhound dog. Um, and then the other appears to be a painting of the manor itself. Um, at the far end of the hallway is this enormous carpeted staircase that leads upstairs. And, um, but Kerbin takes like a, a, a swift um, left as he steps in and says, uh, this way into the drawing room and he opens a door into a, a smaller room with a huge window that looks out onto the lawns that you just walked along. Um, the walls themselves are painted red um, and th like this whole place is like a weird striking thing. Like you've been used to at best the Ironwell Inn <laughs> um, which is still pretty run down and like just bare walls and wood um painted walls and and chandeliers and coving on the ceiling and stuff with these huge windows which Place are just beautiful insanely lavish um the various parts of the room are, are, are sort of trimmed in gold so it's like this red and gold stately room um another set of uh paintings on the wall that seem to depict like great battles that might have been in the war um there's also a large mirror which is very rare to come by um above a, a fireplace and in front are um five very comfortable looking lounge chairs um sat on one of them is lieutenant william Balderdown, who's the he's got that short blonde hair a big wide grin on his face and he's wearing um, clothes eerily similar to Iridir. Um, the same, like, they for sure came from the same shop, and it, <laughs> it might be that you've bought the same. Is items. anyone dressed like me? No. Uh, <laughs> no cool. one in the world. Um, <laughs> just a little meta, meta information for you. Um, I... You are, you, well, I mean, you're setting the trend. Um, that's Another it. gentleman that you don't recognize is sat in the other chair. Um, where, where William has this kind of blonde hair, pristine skin and teeth and a shaven sort of face, athletic frame. Um, the, other man, the other guy, he looks very similar to William. Um, I think um, uh, at a guess you'd, you'd recognize him as maybe being slightly older. Um, same hair color, same kind of style, but a little longer pushed back, kind of greased down. Um, he's wearing sort of jockey's gear. Like he's been out riding, doing some equestrian, um, and they're both just sat there. They've got a, they've already got a glass of wine, um, pouring two more glasses from a decanter. Um, as you walk in, they both turn and smile. Ah, yes, the curse breaker. Please do take a seat, says uh, uh, Lieutenant William. Hello. Neither Hello. Of them, neither of them stand up, but they do, they do kind of flourish across the chairs in front of them. My um, people. Kurgan, Kurgan bows and says good day um, and turns and walks out and he closes the door behind him um, you guys sitting down absolutely uh, yeah definitely I'm, I'm kind of looking around at the place like I'm I'm, I'm assuming there's lots of knickknacks and things around so, as well. yeah just everything there's fresh fruit there's these like there's nice looking silverware um, oh my gosh there's all, these little, sure. there's all these little trinkets that sit around on mantelpieces and tables. I'm Flowers. definitely like making sure that I'm walking around and showing him that I appreciate everything that's in here. You know what I mean? Like I'm sort of like, oh, this is very nice. You know, one of, one of those kinds of things. I'm like, I, I'm trying one of everything. Yeah, you, you guys just start helping yourself to things and the, the two kind of look at you and William says, uh, th this is my brother, Marcel. Would you care for a glass of wine, curse breaker, Iridia? Oh, definitely. Thank yeah, you. Yes, yes, definitely. Yeah, it's Thank you. the finest wine made from grapes on John's farm. Here you go. We Glossy. know John. Oh, you do? Is that John yeah. actually a person? I just thought it was called John's farm. I I actually, I mean, when nineteen was talking about him, he was talking about him like a person. So, 
I mean, I don't know him. He's a friend of a friend. Right, yes. Well, I don't really go out that far, you must understand, unless we go riding and hunting, perhaps, in the forest. Mm. So you never met John? <laughs> no, no. And they kind of laugh and scoff at each other. No, 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 no. <laughs> no we don't, don't, don't go outside the walls too much. <laughs> of course, both of us are enlisted as well in the army and military. Father says that it's good for a man to earn his way. Mm. I agree. You agree? Oh, of course, of course. It seems that you've been doing quite well yourselves. Oh, uh, well, uh, yes, we, of course, uh, inherit most of our wealth from our father and his father before him, Colonel Remington where, where does, Boulderdown. And they kind of both look come at each from other. Your, your family's uh, wealth. We've uh, you have some sort of business? Oh, as far as I'm aware, the Boulderdowns have been here since the very beginning. We helped seed this very land, this town which grew to be a shining beacon. And I'm sure this town would be nothing without you guys. Right? It would be nothing without the Boulder Downs. We've defended it in every war. Father defended this very land himself, and he stomps on the ground. Um, yes, with his own sword and lance, old father, and the uh, the older brother kind of like, um, slaps him. Both of them already kind of look a little rosy-cheeked. Um, and they, yes, father! Yes, father. He's not here, currently. He's a deep wall gate on business. <laughs> business, yes. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> to our own business. You, Drift, you are, uh, yes. going to be representing the Boulder Downs in the competition. Yes. Of course. I should let you know that last year... Our representative made it to third place and took home the bronze trophy. I expect you'll be able to match or perhaps beat that, yes? Abs I'm, I, I only win. I mean, cr the curse breaker only wins. So. And have you seen the tournaments before? Uh, n n no, I've heard about them, though. I asked many people. I've been hoping that you can tell us, uh, yeah, give us about a them, perhaps what's entailed and what's what the rules are. Oh, it's very simple. The whole thing's just a big huzzah and show for the king. May he long live. <laughs> and they kind of smirk at each other. The older brother then takes over and says, yes, they, uh, they put on these melee contests, archery contests, magical contests. We don't deal with the magical contests anymore. It's all sorts of riffraff with that one. Not enough gold in it for us. Too difficult with all the charming. The spells, I don't understand all that myself. Trickery, I say. Trickery. No, I like a good... A good, strong steel in my hand. Reliable. That's why you chose me? Well, well you, you, didn't you say, brother, he's... Yes, they said he... You fought in two great battles, no? Yeah, Dread, yeah absolutely. Yes, he's been in both of them, Drit and that terrible business before, yes. The Company of Masks, right. Well, first of all, we should let them know if they don't understand how tournaments work. Are you sure they're going to be... Yes, 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 whatever. First of all, we'll be willing to offer you 1,500 gold pieces for winning the tournament in our name. Just... just so you're aware. Second of all... Drift, are you all right? Yeah, it was great. I'm like slapping him on the back. It was great. I've never had that's a big grape. They don't seem to there give. There are seeds in them. Yeah, I felt the hardness going down my throat. <laughs> they say the rules are very simple. <laughs> Fuck you. The rules they don't. Fuck you. They're not even aware of you. Like they, and I feel like you probably get the idea that like these two. Fuck you. Even if you make, even if you like, like, they don't even pick up on shit jokes like that. <laughs> they're like, they're completely in their own little. I know. Like, like you feel like, you probably feel a little like you're outside of a joke at all times with these two. Um, they, say the, uh, they say, the rules are simple. It's melee only. Uh, are you a spell caster of any kind? I, I can cast spells. Yes. yes, yes. The shadow sword, you're one of those. Like the red one. What's his name? Walter. Yes, that one. Nasty bit of business. Don't trust him. Smile too wide for his face. <laughs> yeah, y yes. It's melee only. You have two spells, I believe. They must be declared at the beginning okay. and uh, used at maximum twice. 
Yeah, they can't be in the used. whole contest or just in yeah, for each, each for each fight. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Uh, they, they can be used to heal oneself, both for your weapon, your armor. They cannot be used to inflict injury to your opponent or confuse, petrify, charm, or put your opponent to sleep. Um, I believe anything that might inflict damage is uh, forbidden in the melee contest. But you can uh, use those spells to your own advantage. Mm, paladins with their big thunderous smites and whatnot. Yeah, your opponent is knocked out. That is when the fight is over. It's not a fight to the death, although depending on who you strike down, we might be willing to pay a little extra. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah a few, a few of those nasty bastards in there. Whoever the Karsharians put forward. Yes, yes. Well, um, it's as simple as that, really. You just simply have to knock the opponent out. Very, very simple. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you're more than well equipped, right? Of, of course. Um, yes. And then after the fight, we, we get a moment to rest, correct? You'll have, uh, I believe, about an hour between each fight. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm sure your bard here will do a lot to, to help. I, I'm aware that depending on how they perform, they can help inspire. Between fights, of course, yes. and I think that you'll find that I am extremely inspiring. Yes, everybody gets their own bard, and you'll be announcing him on behalf of the Boulder Downs. Yeah. yeah. Well, of course, if that's how this whole thing works. Right. Yes. They kind of like look both of you up and down, and uh, then they they turn back. Yes. Well, really, it doesn't matter how <laughs> well you do. Of course, if you win, that would be. Fantastic. We will, of course, be putting money on you to win. And what if... And I, this is extremely unlikely, of course. It won't happen. What if Drift weren't to win? Would he still be getting any sort of compensation? Well, yes, of course. We can offer some money if you don't win, but you're very confident in winning. Uh, mm. If you win, it's 1,500 gold pieces. But if you make it... What can we offer them? I'd say maybe 300 gold per round. You win the first round, 300 gold. You win the second, 300 gold. If you win the whole thing, we'll just give you a flat 1,500 gold pieces. Of course, the clothes that you're wearing look very nice. And you're welcome, of course. Oh, yeah, I, I, I wanted to tell you right when I came in. I didn't want to interrupt, though. Uh, thank you so much for these pieces. I, yeah. I, Fame I, I, and I, glory and the bragging rights, yes? And they, they kind of like slap each other a couple of times yes the bragging rights of being the boulder down um we really wouldn't want to let father for the down. contest itself yes of to... course yes you'll win uh, gold they usually give some sort of enchanted item away and you get to meet the king king wilma himself and uh, per private meeting you'll be the king of the, the king of this place yes king wilma the second cool He'll knight you as well. I'll become a knight? That's right, yes. A knight of Rose Guard, although it's not actually a... It's more of a title than an actual position. I'm sure you won't have to serve. More titles? Yeah. Okay. I got this. If you win the competition, we'll give you 1,500 gold pieces, and I believe uh, if they win this year, what is it? 1,001 gold pieces. An enchanted piece, a night ship, an audience with the king. And the small bit of information between between the both of us is, I will, for the for being by your side through all of this drift, I will humbly take a smaller cut than you would expect for anyone assisting. No, no. Take, We're splitting this. Exactly. We can split it. You take uh you take uh, about 30% and I'll take about 70. That's the standard. 30 set. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. The support role is extremely important. Well, Here's you're the, the one scroll. who's going to guide me. Here's the writ and they hand you two scrolls each. This is, is, is there, there what? Anything I should know about the people I'm fighting? What do you want to know? 
Do they have any weaknesses that you've seen in the past? Any Anything to help me one up on them? Well, lucky for you, we bought the first position available. And of course, the Palace Guard reserved the first position. We bought the second, which means you'll be fighting Sir Sieg of the Palace Guard themselves. He's I an absolute him. fraud. Yes. Yeah. yeah Seemed he, like a fool. His brother can barely play the flute. <laughs> and, 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 although his family are extremely rich, the Palace don't tend to put forward any of their real fighters. Of course, they're reserved for protecting the king at all times. So he'll be fighting Sir Sieg, although he does have some skill with a blade. He really shouldn't be a problem for a man of your prowess, I take it? Not at all. Yes. And then, of course, depending on who wins the next fight, I'm not sure who's been seeded, uh, but Walter the Red is most likely to be the one that would win. I can't imagine there'll be many that will face him down. He's got a rapier, he's got his old little bag of tricks that he often uses, fanciful work, half-elf. He's quick. Stab him in the face. Stab him in the face. Good show, good show. And then, uh, almost definitely, if you make it to the final, you'll be fighting against Godfrey the Gladiator. He's won almost every single year. And Well, big man, huge man, large sword, comes out of nowhere. Don't large... worry. And I put my hand on Drift's shoulder. Drift has plenty of experience with big men. Right, yes, of course. Uh, I suppose, yes, you are rather short. Well... Um, I would say with Godfrey, uh, uh, ho hold him there. Yes, how about that? Yeah, it'll, it'll take a lot. I've seen him take a few beatings and get back up. Truly, the man should be dead. I don't worry. Drift here is very capable. I'm sure with his speed and <clears throat> pure ability pure alone. Ability. Mm hmm. hmm. Yes, well... He can uh, handle things. Normally we have the time to test and, and run people through training before the fights, but it is tomorrow, and so I suppose we'll just leave it to be a surprise for ourselves, eh, brother? Yes, brother. Um, the writ there is a binding contract to us. Um, if you could sign that now, and they push a uh, quill and ink towards you across a small little table in the center and they say the second one is your proof of entrance into this uh, competition and then they produce two small um uh like marble looking things um and they hand one to each of you this is uh yours and this is yours if you look on them you'll see that one has an instrument a little loot the other one has a sword uh, that is just simply your charge when you get to the gate show that to the guards to make sure that they don't direct you into the stands and they do actually lead you out into the fighting grounds themselves mm, you've entered as the bard for drift the curse breaker uh, each person gets a bard so you'll be standing yes, out there with him in the midst of the crowds you're okay with crowds all those eyes peering down at you from the stands I eat that up for breakfast. You wouldn't have it any other way. Right. Well then, uh, I believe the... What do, what do I do here? Uh, if you could just sign here with the quill. Does he know how to write? Sign, sign what? Do you know how to write, boy? Yeah, of course. All right, but just what write did you your, want me to sign? Write your name there on the line at the bottom. You see a uh, drift <laughs> pick up the uh, the the quill and just literally lays exactly. I'm holding it like this, and I just uh, I just like etch out like just lines. Yeah, they whip it away before you even finish, and they roll it up. Yes, whatever. And uh, this one, yes, Bard. Oh, I have to sign as well. Yes, this is your one. All right. And I start to write down uh, Eero. Just, I just put down Eero. Yes, no one really cares or reads these things. We just have to submit them. You know, we've paid a lot of money for this position. There are only eight spots, of course. Two are always taken. One from the palace, one from the military. That old bastard, the tower, is probably going to be in the tournament, but I don't suppose he'll make it any further than he ever does. And uh, I suppose that concludes our business. We'll see you out there. If you happen to win, you'll be taken off to deal with all sorts of festivities and meet with the king, and uh, we'll see you the day after you can come by. No speaking like that. When? Ah. When? Ah! I like the cut of <laughs> your chip! Yes, <laughs> when you win. Okay, Kurgan! And Kurgan opens the door.
Yes. Hey, we can see them out now. Thank you very much, and good luck, Curse Breaker. We've Thank been you. All of our money on you. <laughs> you better. Yeah. Good day. Good, good, good day. Can I have one more grape before I go? Yes, take the whole bunch. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, you're quite welcome. You have enough money for food, I take it. We don't want you in a ragged state tomorrow. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I have 25 gold. Right, yes. Well, that will feed him. And he turns around and says, Here, are you? Here. he hands you a purse. Thank, thank you, sir. You, uh, I'm going to make you proud. Yes, Promise. well, make sure you eat well and don't get into any sort of trouble. Yes, of course. Remember, you You're are on? filling boots that we already filled. Sure. All right. Yep. Okay, then. For the Boger Downs! Can you, um, before we leave, uh, men such as yourself are well-traveled in this city. Can you recommend any, um, any places around that I might be able to go to for a little bit of company? Company, is it? Yes. Uh, well, yes, of course. Um, hmm. here. He hands you a purse of your own. You'll want to go and see, uh... Nymeria. Nymeria? Yes. She's located, um... Wasn't that the name of the lady from the, from the, uh, Iron, Iron Wall? No, it's Nephine. Oh, Nephine, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Could you imagine? Yes, well, Nymeria's got lots of, uh, girls and boys and whatever it is it takes your fancy. Um, but she is located, uh... A little out of the way, shall we say. Follow the river up north to the wash. Oh, fair enough. Thank you. Yes. And uh, we didn't send you. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, yes, of course not. Right. Good day. I like <laughs> lean to uh, I lean towards Drift and I say, they wouldn't want to be associated with a place like that, you see. What's wrong with hiring companies? Well, it's the sort of company that involves uh, sexual relations. And that's where you just cut. <laughs> so just, and I think, yeah, you guys, you guys head out. <laughs> that's where we just, where you walk <laughs> um, side swipe. Um, you uh, have directions as well, Rin, to the um, mm. to the blue gnome. Uh, yes. Give me an investigation check. Yes. Two. Great. Cool. Two. I'm lost. <laughs> uh, yeah, you had. Why do you even roll dice? Can yeah, I don't know. The lowest number at this yeah, point. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> you head south for. Um, a little ways outside of the uh, Iron Well Inn, and um, she told you to kind of come to the uh, head towards the uh, canal um, and look for a tree which was shaped like a claw. Um, I think you 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 head south and you don't find the canal, and then you get a little confused and you head one there's way. There's supposed and, to be a tree here. Yeah, there's no I, trees, I and then no, you, there's no tree. I wait. Where's hmm. the canal? Um, and I think you definitely get lost, and time starts to um, to um, disappear and run through your fingertips as you uh, get lost in this kind of area, this built-up area. And this area is like a lot, a lot more like the area by the Merchant District in that the houses are much smaller. There's a lot of people that are moving around. They just seem to be families, kids running in the street, um, r relatively. Um, poverty-stricken area, but not quite the slums that are outside of town. Um, um, can I ask for directions? Yeah, I feel like you probably grab like a, a random woman who's like dragging like three kids along the street. All right, yeah. well. Uh, excuse me, do you know where I can find the blue gnome? Uh, blue gnome? Yeah, you're almost there. South down there, turn a right, cross over right. the little bridge over the water. Yeah. Little bridge. Right little there. Bridge, okay. Can't miss it. Oh, perfect. Thank left. you so much. All right. Come here. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. 
And it, she's just Have dragging these like, she's like eight kids, like ducklings following her down the street. Please don't tell me that was one of the people who paid for a character that was their character. <laughs> no. Uh, okay. the, uh, the... I try to follow her directions as best I can. Yeah, give me another investigation check. Okay. Um, I would also like to put that ring on one of them. <clears throat> yeah. Is that... I put this on for dramatic uh, effect yeah. so that we can there. see how terribly I roll. Did did you actually did anybody else see that the number didn't, didn't show up? I'd never seen second? that before. I thought it was yeah. a zero. Like, wow. <laughs> I rolled so bad the dice just she, didn't she, even want to fucking for She herself. fell into the shadow realm. <laughs> um, Sixteen. Yeah, you find it pretty easily once you have these directions. It's much easier okay. to find. You head over, but you're pretty sure you're running late at the moment. Yeah. Um mm -hmm. you come to Is she uh, with nineteen? No, nineteen's no. okay. fucking passed out, getting welded shit to him on the other side of town. Um there's like a stapler. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, quick side swipe to that. And it's just like, ah, oh, fuck, we fucked it now. He's not going to be able to walk. Um, and side swipe back. The, uh, <laughs> the, uh, yeah, so you pass over a small bridge um, over the canal. And this side is even worse than the side was before. Um, this is pretty much just homes. There doesn't seem to be like really anything. Um, there's no merchants. There isn't any carts going up and down. The roads are very thin, very narrow. And there's lots of doorways, people in windows above you. You can hear um, strange things from down darkened alleyways. Um, but uh, it's very, there's a very obvious... Um, tree, which is kind of like one of those willow trees, but it bends over very oddly and looks like a strange claw with the branches coming back down towards the river. Um, and behind it, there's a very small looking single story half timbered uh, building. It's got these shuttered windows um, a, uh, and a, a little sign with a, a tankard hanging weakly um, above a door. Um, the sign has a, an image of a a blue gnome, um, blue face, blue hair. Looks like one of those troll dolls that you used to get. Um, Original. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, yeah, the door the door is open, um, but approaching it, you don't really see anything inside because the windows are shuttered and closed. Okay. I'd like to go inside. Yeah, you head in. Um, and this place, uh, much like the, the Blood Grips bar that you went into yesterday, the Wizard Mug, is very, very empty. Empty. there's not many people in here um you head in the first thing you probably notice actually is that there's a dragon uh skull hey you see everything um there's Sorry, a, there's I'm preemptively a, rolling that because i figured you were gonna there's a big dragon skull <laughs> hanging over an unlit hearth in the back um and i since you rolled the 25 natural 20 um you can tell that it's fake uh it's a big fake looking dragon skull hanging over an unlit hearth um most of the tables are empty. Um, a couple of them are occupied with hooded, sort of shady-looking figures. Um, there's an eye-patched gnome at the bar. Um, he's got a very large eye patch that covers most of half of his face um, in sort of tavern owner's garb, classic-looking tavern gnome. Um, he's cleaning a glass and doesn't greet you as you enter. He just kind of looks at you as you walk in. Um, on your left is uh, a very old-looking... Uh, man, um, very thin looking, very tan looking skin um, and as soon as you walk in he looks up at you um, glances down at your hand. Is the ring out and on display? Yep, I, I actually like wave when I come in to the bartender so anybody who's looking at me would see the ring on my hand. Yeah, the bartender just, just does not give you a second glance really um, the guy looking at you looks at you, looks at the ring and then nods um, back towards uh the the most darkened corner of the bar where you see um tari the woman with the mask over her face and the sort of hood up um the guy sat at the doorway has a very similar looking hood that's kind of peaked over the top of his um head um and he he just sits back there's nothing on the table in front of him either he doesn't have any food or drink or anything he's just sat at the table kind of watching the door um there are maybe two other people in here um, sat at a table kind of quietly discussing something um, and Tari is sitting she's got some food in front of her though she seems to be eating some sort of chicken or something like that um, you heading over to her? I will, yep I'll walk over to her kind of nod at her as I approach yeah she she sort of kicks a stall out from under the chair that 
uh, under the table that she is sat at and says, There you go. I was I expecting next to her. the other one. So was I. Um, unfortunately, as you probably already know, he decided to continue to associate with the blood grips. Why did you not tell him not to do this? I did. But his decisions are his own. Hmm. Well, this proves uh, problematic for us. I figured. Um, here is your... I'm going to give her both the rings back. Hmm. Put them on the table. Yeah, she she takes them back and says, The problem is, of course, that you know the Karsharian name now. I trust that you will not be telling anybody of it. Of course not. Yeah. And I mm. wish you luck in your endeavor. I'm sorry that I couldn't help. She uh, she leans back and says, <laughs> It's no problem. He... You understand our plan is to destabilize the nobility at their own tournament. Huh? Shut them up. Yes. They'll be uh, powerless uh, if we shut them up out in the open like that. Mm, do you know of anybody else who might be able to uh, enter this contest? Are you able to fight? No. Mm. You look like perhaps you can uh, hold your own. I could maybe hold my own, but I have no interest in joining a sword fighting contest. Mm. When, you came, sword. when you came to town, you were covered in blood, and it did not look exactly like your own. It wasn't. Mm. Very perceptive of you. Yes, well, most people will probably think that you are a uh, hunter, huh? But I'm not. I'm simply a monk. Mm. A monk, perhaps. I will not follow you anymore. I have Thank been you. Uh, following you around the town, mm, trying to work out uh, uh, who you are, what is going on with you, but I do not seem to know. And I cannot work you out, and I do not know why any of you are here. It seems like you did not come for the tournament, you got swept up in it. Your business is your own, of course, but should you need work, money, perhaps we can talk? Perhaps. I'd like to think of us as more than just uh, acquaintances, maybe friends. Uh. If you need any work, you know where to find me. Mm. And perhaps you know where to find me once this business is done with the uh, tournament. Eh? There are some nasty types that go around and uh, I could do with uh, the help of your small fighting friend. You mean the curse breaker? Mm. We do not have much muscle. Is probably our strongest fighter is that old man at the door there. Even if he's named the champion for uh, for Lieutenant William? Mm. It does not matter. This tournament is just for the nobles to show off. They it means not much. One day we will. Uh, mm. We will take the throne for ourselves. Hmm? I would prefer a council. Something like that. This monarchy has been here for too long. Too much power. Mm, I do not trust it. I prefer uh, the power to be uh, split among many. Like the council of Lenidel. It makes sense to me. These nobles are uh, drunk on it now. They have too much strength behind their walls. They forget about the poverty outside of them. You're very wise. No, this is not my war to fight. I was brought into it by those older and wiser than me. Eh? Perhaps one day if he lets me, I will run this entire Kersharian band of bandits, they call us. But it is not now. My ways are uh, a little more bloody than they like. Huh? I can relate to that. Mm. I uh, would like to run into the palace and slit the neck of the fucking king myself, but it is uh, mm, a bit too forward. You know, they will just replace him. We have to <coughs> begin our work, destabilize, and then maybe slit his throat. Sometimes it's important to be discreet. 
Mm. You want the town on your side. You don't want to. You don't want to start a rebellion. Yes, or a turf war with the fucking blood grapes. Mm. Yes, I, I did try to stop that. Yes, well, it just I'm sure means you know that, that I'm sure you were watching. Well, we have not painted a big K on him yet, so he can buy what he wants and do what he wants with whom he wants, except that fucking Goliath who is now dead. How did it happen? Hmm. I do not know, but they found him and all of his men strung up this morning. It seems they were hit last night. I'm sure you can fill the blanks. Yeah. Yes, they do not like to be insulted. And they have uh, many friends. I uh, was wondering perhaps if uh, your big friend himself was involved? No. He wasn't involved himself. Hmm. That is possibly good. He wants to be careful. They have a habit of uh, hiring people to do their dirty work and then those people go missing. Huh? Yeah, well, I've warned him twice now, so mm. his de decisions are his own. I can't stop him. Mm. The, uh, the river is uh, very deep and I am not too sure if uh, those Warforged can swim very well. You know, I don't know if they can swim either. Mm. You want to be careful. They are not ones to uh, stop at just the one that they work with. They have seen you, they know your faces, they know you work with each other. Mm. They are a dangerous group, the Blood Grips, and they are happy to murder and kill for what they want. I appreciate the concern, mm. but as you said before, I can hold my own. Mm. Again, I would prefer that you work with us. That is all. Well, it was nice talking with you. I'm going to head back now. Mm. Oh, there was one thing. And I understand if you weren't able to or if you don't want to follow through, but was there any chance you were able to get that statue? Mm. I wondered if you would ask. The best I could do was this. She turns around and produces not a statue, but like a... Um, it's like a an, an anatomy doll, like those little ones that you can bend the arms up. <laughs> stop, 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 it doesn't, fuck up. It doesn't, uh, it's, it stands on a stand with a thing behind it and it's wooden and carved. And she says, I do not know if this is good enough, but it's the best I can do at short notice. It's perfect. Mm. You can have it. Thank you. Mm. And do, uh, do you, do I owe you something? I have, I have gold. Mm, no, I am not quite as bad as those blood grapes will have you know. Huh? Perhaps uh, you can uh, owe me a favor in the future. Hmm? Favors are dangerous, but okay. Do not worry. I will not call upon it with blood. Hmm? I uh, do not know why you are here, but you do not seem too bad to me. <laughs> Thanks. Hmm. And, All right, Tari, uh, good luck. Yes, be sure to uh, keep an eye out. There are many groups that work in this uh, city. Y you are uh, dealing with the Blood Grip family, but there are the Moln family are more powerful. Eh? The Night Stalkers, dangerous bastards. You are uh, messing with things that I do not think any of you understand. And I, no, for I one, would like to see you with uh, your head on it. You in particular. Well, thanks, Tari. Hmm. Eh, I don't have many friends, huh? Well, you have one. Hmm, perhaps. Well then, this chicken looks very nice. Enjoy your meal. Hmm. I Good stand day. up and I leave. Yeah, you are uh, leaving the whole bar? Yep. Uh, give me a perception check. Oh, boy. Woo! That was good. 14. 14. Yeah. You, uh, as you're heading out, you can hear the whispers of the two other, um, the two other uh, hooded figures who were sat at the other side of the bar, not the old man. Um, and they kind of whisper to each other as you, you're leaving. Like they're, they're just talking, but I wanted to just see if you could hear what they were saying. You can hear them. They've obviously been listening to your conversation um, oh. and you catch the, the back end of theirs. Well, we're not going to find anyone to replace him. Well, I suppose I'll have to sell it. Well, this puts a fucking spanner in our plans, doesn't it? Been training for fucking months. Yeah? Well, I've been training for years, all right? 
That one's been training for the whole time he's been alive. And how old is he now? 100? Yeah, well, not much we can do about it, eh? Are we following her? No, she said we ain't going to follow her. We're going to leave her alone. All right, we'll leave her alone. But they watch you as you walk out. I look at them and I smile. They smile Nod, back. Nod, and then I leave. Yeah. Um, oh, man. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, as you head out, the, uh, the barman doesn't look at you. The old man um, kind of watches you leave, and then uh, you head back out into the street and head to the bar again, the yep. Iron in. Yep, the, the other inn. I am oh, well actually, you know in. what? I will go to the library. Can I do that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's the, uh, it's the Guild of Knowledge. Yep, that's where I would like to go. Okay, yeah, so you can just start walking okay. along the canal. Yep. Um, 19. <laughs> <laughs> 19. Getting drilled. Getting drilled. Um, you are um, at the other side of town. Roll me 2d12s. Oh, come on, baby. I can do this for you. Oh that's my good. god! That's good. Oh, um, okay. That's good. Uh, so that's a three that's and damage. a one. That is some of the damage you've taken. Um, but it's doubled because it's fire damage. So in total, it's eight. Whoa! So you can knock off eight HP. Wait, um, you could have killed him there? For sure, yeah. They could have killed him. Um, they, they... I kind of knew that going into it. They they have been welding things onto you and, and doing all sorts of dwarven forge work on your um on your body for the entire day so far um i feel like it's probably about one in the afternoon as you kind of come to um and the room that you're in is very dark and very quiet um and your entire body aches um all over you've got this kind of um strange sensation again because pain is very odd to you the Ew. feeling of aching is new that feeling of burning that you've never had um new and it's all over you can feel it everywhere specifically on your chest your arms your legs and around your uh jaw um sounds like my real life right now yeah uh <laughs> you but you wake my up and you, you you come to and the uh the um you hear a voice next to you go Oh, he's waking up. Oh, he's waking up. Oh, he's alive. Oh, he's alive. I oh, couldn't tell, but he is alive. Um, two faces appear above you. One is of a very old-looking dwarf with a very long grey beard that you don't recognise. And he's in a, a kind of a white um, robe with like some blue trim on it. Um, and then the other one is Telchul, Blood Grip, the guy that you uh, met yesterday. And he has a big old wide grin on his face, and he says, "Ah, you've waken up, right?" Come on then, let's get you up. And he grabs one of your um, arms and uh, lifts. Um, as uh, as he lifts you up, he holds the bracer in front of you on, on your arm, the big golden bracer with the gems in it, and he says, Nice, nice, hey. Yeah, I suppose that's the word you could use for it. It's not so bad. Hey, hey, yeah, well, your left arm... Why couldn't they get that bracer off? They tried. They tried everything. They didn't even touch it. Whatever the fuck that's made of is fucking invincible, son. That's good shit. If you can take this that off, job. I'll buy that off you. Right here, right now. All the gold I got. I wish I could tell you that I could sell it, but as you saw, not only does it not come off, I've also got... You kind of like... He kind of like looks down at his body for the second, like trying to realize what's going on. Looks back up. It sadly is a part of, and I kind of look at him real deep, like like the eyes kind of get like small. Have you ever had a situation that you didn't really know how you got involved in, but you know you got involved and you were stuck with it? Have you ever ran into one of those situations before? You're describing my life, son. That's every day. <laughs> we should share stories about that sometime. Hey. Even though I don't have many, because I've only been awake for a while. But this one, he holds up his wrist. This story is good enough. I'll have you know, and I look at all of them. I look them all over. Myself and fire is not quite my friend. Fire hurts me more than 
Well, anything. So, to be honest with you, I assume that you've always felt pain. You're some kind of dwarf or humans feel pain. I've not something I'm used to. I felt almost every second you were welding everything onto me. Mm. A lot of that has to do with this. Ah, uh, right. I see that's enchanted, is it? I, I thought so. I thought so. It's good, though. It's damn good. I don't think good. it's enchanted, to be hey, honest with you. I think it has good. to be. Like, he's, like, grabbing it again as well and, like, looking it over. Yeah, it's unbelievable. That I don't even know how it's so close. Like, it's like it's no. grown out of you, you know. I tell you what. When I'm able to get this off in the future, you'll be the first person I come back to knowing you were interested in purchasing it. I, I, I promise. I'll give you, you, I'll give, I'll give you everything I go for that anyway, right? So, you've survived, okay? Now, yep. two things. One, you're good to go, right? We gave you a few smashes, try and wake you up, but it also served as a good test. You're going to be stronger than you've ever been. You're heavier. That's sure. You want to be careful now, right? You're going to be uh, a little unstable maybe if you stand up. Oh, it's going to be... You guys uh, to stand up kind of tumbles a little bit. Everything feels heavy. Like your whole body yep. is heavier now. Um, yep. But it's not so bad. Um, he says, uh, The boy said you wanted something around your face. So you got yes. something... Like uh, we got... We sorted you out. Right? So you're protected around the neck. You got these here pauldrons on your shoulder. There was some soft spots around your chest which are covered, but it's big. It's mm. big. You're you're a big thick bastard now, right? Now, your legs, they look odd, I know. And if you look down, you'll see that one leg is slightly bigger than the other. He says, uh I, uh, mm. He says yeah. they must judge something. In the calculations, right? Now we can fix it up. We can either make this one smaller or we can replace that one. To be honest, I didn't tell him to do it because I thought you is dead. We all mm. thought you is dead. I understand. Well, I'm in. I was about to cut your arm off and sell that. I'm not going to lie. I understand that. That would have been. And he looks at him and kind of like as much of a grin as a war forge. And he goes. That would have been very interesting, to be honest with you, because <laughs> he kind of laughs. I'm kind of happy you didn't, not for my sake, because I would have probably been killed, but for your sake as well, because who knows what the person that put this on me would have done, because I'm very certain that they know where this is at at all times. <laughs> right, I see, yeah, well, Grandpa Blood Grip come in at the right time. He points at the kind of old dude, and again, like, you look at him, he looks like he's wearing kind of cleric robes, um, this old dwarf. He's got, like, a, a gnarled-looking kind of um, staff that he's holding onto, and he looks super old. Um, and he's looking at you, and he says, Hey, all right, I was looking at that one. Uh, it's been a while since I've had to look over a Warforge, but you can always tell if they're alive, right? You gotta look them, look them deep inside. You gotta find a part of them inside, and you'll see a bit of light. They've always got a bit of light, like blood, the green, white, right? And that's how you know they're still awake. Their eyes, they're turn off. Their eyes turn off, right? But it's like the sun. It's like the sun goes away at night. Their eyes go away while they're sleeping. That's, that's very much so the truth. Quickly to just to point us out. With the way that I'm feeling, and he kind of like, you could see he's like kind of hung and over. He's kind of sluggish. I think it would be smart to even out both legs at some point in time. Today, after everything I've went through with doing this and having to feel every bit of it, it might be a good idea to come back. Now, I understand that if I come back, there will probably be a fee since you're not doing it same day. Am I correct on that, or...? Oh, uh, he's, uh, he's gonna... Ha we's, we's taking the fee from you. Right. Uh, but... The problem is you owe us more, cause we had to use two potions of healing to keep you alive. Right, how much would that be for those two potions? That's, that's gonna cost you 50 gold. 50 gold? Well, at the current point in time, I don't have quite 50, but I can get it to you. That won't be a problem. Uh, can, would you? Hmm. I can most likely get you the gold by end day today, or I can potentially pay you back both healing potions. Would either of those work for you? I can get those to you by end day. I either I do. I don't mind trading that out. I, I, I come from old, old Gammon's personal stash. That's a problem. He's a bit ratty, but he's all right. Hmm. 
Well, what I will do is I will meet back up with my friends. I will figure out your money. I will get that to you. And I will also, maybe we could schedule a time. Maybe tomorrow morning I could come back. We could even out these. He looks down at one leg, looks at the other leg. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe I get used to this. Because I would assume that, like, the right leg is just pretty good size compared to the other leg. Yeah, I mean, it, it, either way, it would work to, to replace the uh, the big leg or okay. or shave it down. Um, I don't think it really matters. Um, when you look down, you notice that, that it's not just plain, um, yeah, like steel that's been welded on. They've actually kind of uh, put a color and a wash on it already. Um, and he sees you kind of looking and says, Hey, yeah, we, we went and touched you up a bit, right? Because you looked a state. I'm not going to lie. I couldn't let you walk out. Now, you can go and get it recolored if you want. But we thought we'd just give you the old... Uh, Blood grip war colors, right? Um, mm. The style is like this, because you went for the dwarf style. So it's this okay. kind of style. So That's you kind of look like this. Um, imagine your own warforged body, and then the, the parts that have been added on have this kind of weird kind of swirling pearlescent color to the uh, bluish color, and then a golden trim to it um, with the black underneath. So these it are the colors... Like from fifth element he looked like the dude from fifth element um <laughs> so Time this is the more. this is the style oh, at least. i love that my hands potentially kind of look like that that's you also sick. yeah and this is the colors um oh he, man that's awesome he says uh they got we, that black underneath too right no yeah. oh, god the, only funny. the bits that they added on look like this um and it's the pauldrons there's a bit down so your right arm i think you said at first that your bracer is on the left arm or or did i tell you your bracers were on the left i think arm? you I said my remember. bracer is on the left arm i think um the left arm doesn't have any of this on it the right arm does have a, a bracer that kind of matches in size the other one on the other arm um and looks like this you have a uh, new chest plate um thigh plates shin plates um and on the back as well the tell me what um, like around my head would you What's it you, look like? You look like, you look like, uh, I think his name's Darth Malgus now. Let me check. <laughs> the one that has the fucking circle thing around his fucking throat. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I didn't get a picture in time. Uh, but you look like that fucking Jedi that has the fucking circle thing that goes around the bottom. Um, uh, it's kind of just that's what it, like your head is now inside of a, a circle okay. circular thing that comes up <laughs> and is in this in this thing your mouth is covered um, mm. people can't see your um, <clears throat> see your mouth but you don't have uh, my hair is so long and annoying um, you don't have uh, um, uh, yeah you, we can't see your your mouth at all but your mouth doesn't move or do anything anyway really um, but your head now moves within a kind of circular frame um, in terms of your stats though mm, I assume that'd be some switching up on that yeah you straight up lose a dex point okay minus one did dex you did you already remove that or you want me to remove it nope you can do it I haven't done anything um, you want me to remove uh, so you're saying remove one dex in like where I have 14 just take it straight down to 13 yeah whatever it is 14 in the to box 13 the left. which really sucks yep um okay. and you because you're heavy as fuck now um yeah, yeah, yeah. but you get uh where is it fucking armor so it was scale mail mm -hmm. maybe we can do this in a bit but you can switch out your chain mail for scale mail you can type it in and do it. Okay. And that'll bump up whatever your AC is. We can work it out in a second. I can't remember what it yeah, does yeah. for you because you've got two for when you have a shield and when you don't. Um, yeah. I think it puts you to 20. I think it does. It puts me naturally to 20 or 20 with the shield? Um, I think it, is that how much would the scale mail, uh, how many AC does the scale mail add? Good question. We can do it later so we can just get back into role play. We can finish, we can do that afterwards. I just can't seem to open up the fucking armor list. I don't know why. Mm. Oh, it's because I, I already had it open. Really when I was looking for it. It's this. There you go. So you can check on there. Um, the sheep. <laughs> the sheep will do it. So uh, yeah, scale. No, it wasn't scale mail. It was splint. Sorry. 
But yeah, yeah. So splint is uh, uh, flat 17. Wait, no. So you must have had splint. How did you have this? I don't know. We'll work it out in a minute. Yeah, we um, can make it work either way. Because technically speaking, it's like it's not really splint, I guess, right? Technically, because it's like whatever they forge on me. So we can just worry about it another time. It's mechanically splint, yeah. Um, you, um, yeah, you see the uh, the dwarf kind of look you up and down and say, Right, well, thing is, you uh, you done us a solid yesterday, to be honest. I know it was your job, but uh, you still did us a solid, and honestly, uh, you have really helped us out. You know, we're going to have a lot of contracts coming from the military and doing a lot more work on your kind, I'm sure. So if you come back, like, I don't know, give us a few months, come back in a few years, we'll fix you up with something, something better when it comes to it. You've really only got, like, what we could find around today, you understand? Garmin didn't want to do it, he started doing it, and uh, we didn't have time to get the materials that I would have probably put on you, but you're looking pretty good, you're, you're looking like you can take a beating now. So, uh, come back in a year and we'll upgrade you for free, eh? Is that a year? Aye, 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 aye. Aye. I will see you in a year if I make it. Also... To all of you, and he looks over the whole group. I may not know you very well, none of you. And I understand that from what I've heard, and maybe you like this, but your name seems to have a, a harsh behind it, if you will. So far, you've been nothing but kind to me, and I am grateful for that. I wish all of you well. If I see you at the bar at any point in time or see you around the city, I owe all of you a drink. I also would like to ask you, and he kind of takes his greatsword. At some point in time, before I leave the city, I might come back to you if I would. I have this, and he... The shield comes out, but it just stays as like a little square. This gem is very important to me and dear to me. This greatsword is also very important and dear to me. At some point in time, I'd like to fix this sword up a bit and put this gem in the hilt. I would love to bug you about that before I leave the city, which will probably be in the next five days or so. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. I will take your business. Zeb's a uh, uh, weaponsmith. He does all that. I'm sure you can put a gem in something, right? You do that all the time. Yeah, you do that all the time. I'll do that for you, no problem. Just sharpen it, too. Make it better. Yeah, of course, yeah, Waitstone. I, I appreciate that. Thank you all. I need to, and he slowly starts getting up like he's just like an old man, like, right, remember, it's it going to be difficult walking at first, so, yes. you know, you're just going to have to, yeah, that's right, hey, that's it, like that, left foot, right foot, careful on that big one. I need to find my friends and meet back up with them, and, oh, this is going to be a very long walk back to the inn. Yeah, I'll take make it, it easy, take it easy. He just gets up, he just kind of he's just hitting because he's so heavy right now I'll get the hang of it and then he leaves farewell farewell right back to the normal work is it okay just because I was up late doesn't it mean that years lot can slack off says uh, Telchel to the others as he um, begins barking orders and you start heading back to the Ironwell Inn I assume the others are there you guys oh no 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 yeah iridir drift where did you go after this Are you heading to the i want to get my statue you had yeah to we would to get his uh statue for sure all right Aww. give me uh give i'm me on cloud a, nine give me like a couple nothing. of in fact no we'll, we'll just follow I'm, you guys I, I think i think on the way there i i, I probably would have said something i would have said um drift um there is a possibility that um, things m may not be as you expect with your statue. Uh, what do you want? Okay, that's that's fine. I mean, I just wanted some sort of statue. If it doesn't look like me, that's no big deal. Uh, it might not look like anything, to be honest. There is a, a chance that 19 may have angered the people that we are about to go see. 
Why, why would he do that? They were nice people. Well, he had taken on a contract with uh, some people that he... Oh, so he didn't get... He didn't actually... She didn't say yes to marrying him, correct? So they're a little bummed that, about that. That is correct. Okay. You could say that, yes. Yeah. Uh, b but there's a bit more to it. Um, unfortunately, 19 uh, took it upon himself to um, be very specific with the, uh, the, the, the fellows that we met inside the bar yesterday. Um, they seem to have a bit of a grudge against uh, the Fort Smasher and his fellows. Okay, so you, wait, what you're saying is, I, I think I, I understand what you're saying. So, what do you think I'm saying? I, I think you're saying that Nineteen was supposed to ask the guy if if, they, if she would marry or the girl if she would marry the guy. But that might not have happened because 19, 19 did something to screw something up, pretty much is what you're saying. That's simplifying a, a bit, but um, suffice to say, the person that he spoke to in the bar is the, the young lady's um, fiance. Imagine if you were marrying someone and then someone came into an establishment where you oh, were Oh, that's drama. I do not want to be... A no, that's fine. I, I understand. All right. And the person that we are going to see right now yeah. is the person that sent 19 there to do that. This is so, going to be awesome. <laughs> All I'm suggesting to you is that your statue might not be a statue anymore. It is yeah. a strong possibility that your statue is now a pancake. I don't think they would turn it into a pancake, though. I'm a pretty nice guy, you know? And I, I feel like they would still give, you know, if they if they did make it. I think they would. They I would wish still. you all the best, Ben. Thank you. So as you're walking along, you head back down that main street it's starting to get really busy and eventually you come to that kind of intersection where the uh where the um armorers is and the door which was open before is closed and boarded over um there's only uh there's a woman there's a young dwarven woman no i say young she's not young she's a middle-aged dwarven woman um just in like a basic tunic, um, a kind of a, a, a um, like a robe over a over a head, um, and she's just sitting by the doorway crying. Just <laughs> as you approach, excuse me. <laughs> yes. Can I help you? Is something the matter? What's uh, wrong? Oh, yeah, it's my husband. He's dead. I look at Drift really slowly. <laughs> turning I did the same head. exact thing. I don't know what to do, our kids. Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean dead? You mean that the, the store is dead or the, the person? <laughs> They're all dead. Somebody came by last night. Got them all. Slit all their throats, hung them up. Four of them, dwarves, two Goliaths, all good boys. And my husband, oh sorry. I don't know why and I don't know what I did to deserve I just, this. I just kind of like lean down and give her a hug. She kind of hugs you back. Did, did, you, did you know them? We only met them briefly. I'm, I'm so sorry for your loss. They were making me a statue. And I'm sure it was going to be the best statue Not the ever. time drift. Right. Well, I don't know what to do now. I suppose i got to go tell the kids. Are, are you going to be okay? I don't know. 
I, I was just relying on Swirly to bring home the silver. I don't know how I'm going to feed him. Here, here, take this. And I reach in my my uh, pouch and I, I grab the gold that I was just given. The whole bag. And I give it to her. Yeah, it was... Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, of course. I'm, I'm sorry for your I loss. I said gold. I don't... I give, I, uh, I give her my bag as well. Are you sure you... This is Angel Sent. Angel Sent, aren't you? Well, I, my my name's actually Drift the Curse Breaker. Uh, I'll be I'll be playing in the games tomorrow, and I know you're or, or fighting in the games tomorrow. And I'm sure you're not gonna want to watch it because you're going through a lot right now. But if you do, root for me, okay? Yeah, I will. I will. Angels, I say, uh, God bless you. <laughs> She she fucking goes though. She grabs the money and she just fucking disappears into the crowd. The uh the doorway is completely boarded over. There's like nothing you can't even see inside. Um the door is locked. Um and the alleyway is empty other than this. <sighs> well, that is unfortunate. Although I have to say it's not altogether unexpected. So wait, no. 19 killed six people? No, no, Drift. 19 associated with some people that were rather unscrupulous. And I believe that they are the ones that did this. So wait, is it my fault? Like, no, gonna make it's statue not your for me. fault. If I didn't want the statue, we would never have come it's here. It's not your fault, Drift. It's not your fault. Did I, get, did I get people killed? No. That's probably a good way to end the session today. The, uh... Rin heading along a canal, 19 stumbling back, and you two down a darkened alleyway next to a boarded up doorway, looking a little lost about what to do <laughs> oh <my> next. God. <laughs> heavy, dude. Heavy. Fun shopping and then heavy. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> there's a lot going on in this city. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot going on in this city. There's a lot of cogs. Um that were uh. working and uh you guys are now involved in many of those cogs <laughs> we really are we yeah. really got into some deep mafia shit yeah um without even trying yeah you i mean you know at least you have some good relationships with the mafia at this point <laughs> silver lining uh Thanks We're for all playing. connected to different parts. You are. It's so weird, and none of us know it. That's yeah. the funny part. It's like, yeah, it ish. Like you, you know, like, like ah oh man, Rin knows that I've, I'm yeah. with the Boulder Downs, but like, shit's so good. Uh, <laughs> I'm so oh, hyped about all this. To be honest, this is like my favorite episode. I'm there. so hyped because it's like weird, like role playing your character and like 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 role playing your character, right? And like leaving it at like this is what your character knows. And then, like, in the back of all of our brains, we're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> meta. We're trying not to meta. That's the fun thing. Well, it's, it's yeah, like, you've, you've know each what got... Know what you know. You're each involved with different kind of... Uh, in in Yeah, interwoven groups that work within this, uh, within this city. There's, um... There's, like, f there's about five or six that are major ones, and you're, you're involved with... Three? One, Four. two... Three, yeah, three. If you sort three. of count like the Boulder Downs and the military and nobility as one, which they kind of are, um, and yeah, you just walked into town and, and and split up and got involved with three of them. Um, interesting. Three. What a mess! What a beautiful mess! Um, hey, tournament tomorrow. <laughs> tournament <laughs> nice tomorrow. Week. You, uh, yeah, you are. In the tournament. Now they need to find someone to replace 19 because he's out of the tournament. Yeah. Even though they had already begun processing the papers. <laughs> what a fucking great. nightmare. Um, 
Thanks for playing, players. We'll do a round of shout-outs, and then we'll uh, end the sesh. Thanks for watching, everybody. Sorry about some of the tech issues. I had some tech issues on my end as well, which is why I was kind of, like, juggling in and out of stuff. I'm so sorry about times. that. Yeah, I blue-screened on the last time. It, it wasn't, wasn't even just you. I was having, like, crazy issues as well with half of the shit I was doing. I think my internet's playing up on me, which is really annoying. Um, but we made it through to the end, except for... Fort Smasher and his men. They didn't make it through to the end. Stop hurting me. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> moment, moment of silence. The moment How much silence. gold do we give her, his, by the way? I didn't name, even check the pouch. His name just feels like way more unfortunate. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we'll never know. She's rich now. They probably put I up guess a good fight. There was, there was dwarves and goliaths. They probably put up a good fight, right? Right? Um, mm, I was worried that they were going to see them strung up when they like turn the corner so at least that's what i was worried about too i was terrified that that's what was going to happen so i'm glad it was just that but it happened very late last night it was also a mission that you could have taken just <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yeah you could have had that you could have gone with them uh and earned yourself some nice blood gold um if you want it. Blood so gold. Quest, quest is now unavailable. Um, let's go around the table and the uh, say, uh, say uh, uh, who you are, where you're from, where people can find you. Let's start with John Same Man himself. Hey, guys. Thank you uh, for watching. Uh, if you want to check out my channel, uh, we just started Red Dead Redemption 2, which is unreal. And I would, I mean, I, I think there's no reason for me to even say it. It's just so good. Um, and I, I play variety, so it's a different game every night, pretty much. And then we go back to games. So love you guys. Thank you for watching, as always. Noise. Uh, Mr. Tiger Writer, aka Hello. Upgraded uh, 19. 19, so, so, more like 20. Partially, yeah. parsh, partially Sorry. upgraded, partially downgraded temporarily while he's got one big lumpy leg. Yeah. No, I'm Tiger Rider. Thanks for watching and thanks for enjoying my character and everybody else and all my friends' characters and continuing to come back and watch us and hang out with us and be a part of our little community here that we have for Dark Fire. And thanks to everybody that comes out and supports Table Story and supports a bunch of them. And just thanks. If you guys want to watch me, I stream Wednesday through Sunday. I usually start around 3 p.m. PST, sometimes earlier. And uh, I just play video games. I'm variety as well. I play everything and anything. And I just like to horse around. And I don't take myself very serious. So, bye. Nice. I, I should, uh, by the way, when I, I rolled for like how well of a job that they would do for you, and they rolled a four, I think. Um, which is why I gave you like the gammy leg and shit. Like they, oh. they're perfectly capable of doing it. I just wanted to see how well they did it, and they did pretty poorly. But when I rolled for um, how good they made it look afterwards, uh, I rolled a nineteen. So that's like the. That's why it looks so it's fucking so nice. Like, it on purpose. It's, all, it's, all, it's all like painted really nicely and it has that kind of like, I figured I'd just go with that exactly how it looked on there. I was just going to use it for style, but I think the colors and stuff probably look pretty good too. And it, it has that weird sort of pearlescent swirl to it. Do so we it, know what buffs it gave him? It looks really nice. Well, it's just an upgrade of armor. It's just because he's a Warforged, me and Tiger oh, okay. decided a while ago that it'd be fun if instead of him just buying a new shield and donning and doffing armor, they actually weld it onto him. Um, That's so super it's just, cool. It's just how we decided to do it. So... It really, it was just a, a massively exuberant way to upgrade armor. That's all he really did was purchase armor like a normal thing. But um, I thought I'd roll to see how well they did. They did a bad job, so I thought, oh, fucking, they'll, they'll fuck it up somewhere. And then uh, I rolled to see how well they did, like, the paint job. Because I was kind of just treating it like a car. I didn't really know. I don't know much about, like, shit like that. So I was like, fuck it. It's just a car that's being worked. So it's like, pimp my ride here. Um, <laughs> so they made it look good. Um, but they gave you one gammy leg uh, for now, which once they fix, you'll you'll get that dex point back. Um, Ooh, but I just thought I'd tell you that that's what that was all about. Um, also, <laughs> you, you sort of took all the damage and shit. Um, PB. Where can people Hello. Find you? Hi, I'm Pumpkinberry, or PB. You can find me at twitch.tv slash pumpkinberry. I am also here on Fridays for Identity Crisis. And I just did, for Halloween, we did a three-part um horror show on equal trade which you can find at table stories youtube and that's that's it thanks for having me uh thanks for playing and um last but not least mr wax steven 
What's going Hi, on? Hi, everybody. You've got a lot of shit to probably fucking shout out. I'm I'm Wax Steven, and uh, I'm normally the GM or DM of Doom, depending on the show that you're watching. Um, but uh, here I played Eero Deer. Thank you guys for hanging out, watching in general. So we appreciate you, chat. Thanks for thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for all the uh, all the fan art and hopefully fan fiction after today. Oh, oh no! <laughs> Bug. Please, I will. I will seriously. If you write fan fiction, I will fucking read it oh on my, my screen. God. No, I don't. will read it on my screen. We had this <laughs> fucking <laughs> shit before. Oh God! <laughs> yeah, yes. remember that um, one? Yes, I. I fucking I horrendous. Um, but thank you guys so much for for watching, and hanging out with us. Uh, there's a ton of shit coming up uh, for for table story in general. Um, Thursday we got uh, I think a sort of skeleton crew ragtags and then I don't uh, even know how Friday. we're doing that but yeah Friday we will see the return of Poloculus oh my god identity. yes I forgot Poloculus That's is here right. hang on Poloculus returns on Friday, Friday. Poloculus oh. is here yeah never fear <laughs> and um uh we just released the teaser for a new show coming up here on table story what? uh called crash city that's crash right city we're gonna be revealing some details about that soon so stay tuned on all the table story stuff and uh check it out uh otherwise sunday we've got sparkly turnip aka spark of eternity um and uh on monday we've got sector 49 judge dread in the world's 2000 AD. So are you at a full week now a show every day? No. no. Six days. Six days. Six days. As soon as Crash, when Crash City Coming starts, up. six days. Well, it's Identity Crisis only has a couple episodes left. So oh, are they going to miss? So it's still yeah, it's right. going to miss. Yeah. We're going to be at five. Well, at least Poloculus is in it. Poloculus. I need to remember how to do I can't even do the fucking voice anymore. It's been so long. <laughs> Brother, it's been too long. Don't worry, guys. I'll help. There you go. You there got you it. Poloculus. Um, it's just a stupid. It's back. just the anime. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Al. I'm gonna get your body back. Um, <laughs> yeah, but thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching, time. everyone. I should probably announce as well for those of you that enjoy the world of Lacrin, which is the world that this is set in. Um, in a thousand years after Darkfire, a group of completely useless people set out on a journey to do nothing, and that was the Dustvale campaign, which we uh, played, completed, and finished um, prior to starting this one. Um, but we are doing a holiday special episode on the 12th. 12th of December uh, at, I forget the time, I think the same time as this, 5 Eastern, and uh, the whole crew's back for one night only to, um, to, to deal with something known as desert snow, because in the desert it's going to snow. And it's going to get damn cold. And only Wait, one cool. group of people and a horrific aberration god version of Arden have to try and stop whatever the fuck is causing it. I'm not going to spoiler it. So if you want to, uh, if you do want a full week of Table Story, that might be the week. I don't know. That is on the 12th on a Wednesday. Um, so the Dustvale one shot, just a little epilogue post campaign bullshit holiday special. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. Yeah. And we'll see you next time to untangle this fucking mess. <laughs> Goliath out. <laughs> Goliath out. <laughs> wow. 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 Oh, Just, sorry. Uh, that was pretty <laughs> Dude, that was pretty come on. Right, bye. Bye.